Can't. Sexy, fun, speed. Dude. You're just not getting it. I'm never scared. I'm never scared. There are times when I'm concerned. Two weeks ago, on the streets of Long Beach, the beautiful people were out in force, and all eyes were on Newman Haas Racing and driver Cristiano D'Amata looking for their fourth consecutive win. Their chances looked good early on, but this pit drama closed that door. Great pit strategy helped Michael Andretti come from 15th starting position to edge out Jimmy Vassar in an All-American shootout, adding another chapter to the Andretti family legend in Long Beach. We have traveled halfway around the world to Japan, where the skills of champ car drivers will be tested for the first time this season on an oval track. Twin Ring Motegi is about 60 miles from Tokyo through family rice paddies and up into the mountains, where today we will see round three of the CART FedEx Championship Series, the Bridgestone Potenza 500. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Derek Daly. Welcome to the sunshine of Japan. Now, we're on top of a mountain here where apparently $450 million worth of Honda money built this sprawling motorsports complex. Now, although this is Honda's house, they've never won a champ car race here. Ford have won all four. Local interest with the crowd? Well, it's got to be with their own drivers, Shinji Nakano and Tora Takagi. But there may be more to play for this afternoon. It's called National Pride. It's called Toyota versus Honda. Now, don't discount Ford, but if you were here yesterday, you saw a titanic struggle for the pole position between Toyota and Honda. With more on that story, let's go down to the second member of our broadcast crew this afternoon, Calvin Fish. Calvin? Thanks, Double D. The battle for top honors started here yesterday in a sensational qualifying session. It was really a seesaw battle between the Toyota boys and the Honda boys, but eventually Bruno Junquero claimed the pole. You said it was the best qualifying lap of your life. How much pressure was on you from Toyota to perform? Uh, I was putting pressure on myself. I really want to do it well for Toyota. My car was good all the weekend, and I thought that I was the one that could give Toyota the pole because Tony already had the pole, and I was the only Toyota left, and I said I have to do it. And I give a bonsai on turn three and four, and that's good. Last year, you were the fastest Toyota man uh, as well, but uh, at, well, <laughs> here's Tony Kanan, the other Brazilian on the front row. Last year, you were the fastest Toyota, but only lasted one lap. You're home for a different scenario today, I'm sure. Yeah, I hope I hope I can finish the race and maybe try to win for Toyota. Tony, excuse your noses. <laughs> Do not, okay. Well, I'm in here as well. We've got three good ones speaking out here today. Let's have a chat here with Tony. Tony, uh, Bruno, did you knock you off the top spot? But... You were second in qualifying yesterday, but the fastest in the warm-up this morning. Is that more significant? Uh, I don't think so. You know, be the winner of the warm-up doesn't count anything, but uh, the car feels good. I think Bruno has a competitive car. I do, too. We're going to try to do a clean start. You know, we, we know each other for a long time. We came a long way. It's a long race. I think the most important thing is to lead the last lap, not the first or the second. So uh, we have a consistent car. I really want to do... Uh, well here for Honda, for Pioneer, for myself and uh, my team. So uh, let's see what's going to happen. It seems like your team though, has really been focused on the longer runs. You've been putting 60, 70 laps on the tires. Do you think you'll have a better race car than some of the other guys in the field? Well, probably. We're not going to run 67 laps in a set here. We have 38 laps. You have to do a pit stop. But uh, if it happens at the end of the race that you just, you know, need to come in for no tires, I think we're in a good shape. I can't tell you much. Bruno is here, so I don't want to show all my secrets before the race. All right, boys. Good luck today. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get it up top to the guys who are going to call the sequence of events here this weekend. Bob Varsha, Tommy Kendall, and Scott Pruitt. All right. Thank you, Calvin. Welcome, everyone. Gentlemen, I don't think we should be fooled, despite all that joking around down there in the pit lane. When the green flag waves, the knives will come out. And no question. And that, that permagrin on uh, Bruno's face says it all to me. It was, it's going to be a real interesting race today. The biggest question is, can Bruno make the flag? Let's take you back to qualifying. One round in this, the first oval race of the year. Sinji Nakano in front of his home fans was the third car on track. Knocked Oriol Serbia off pole. Then four cars later, his countryman, Tora Takagi, came out and knocked Nakano off provisional pole. Two cars after that. It was our Long Beach winner, Michael Andretti. 
who knocked Takagi off provisional pole. Ten drivers in all had a piece of the provisional pole spot. And Michael then held off the next five drivers with a lap at 211 miles an hour at average speed. Finally, Dario Franchitti rolled out wearing our visor view can. You'll be seeing a lot of that in today's race. He upped the ante to 212 miles an hour. It's a great shot here. Flat out one and two, downshift in three, back to the throttle, exiting four, clear up to the fence. And then more of the heavy hitters as we went in inverse order of practice times. Defending race champion Kenny Breck in a Toyota powered Lola. And then Tony Kanaan in a Honda powered Raynard. Everyone's been talking about the Lolas, but uh, Mo Nunn and Tony have that uh, Raynard running well. Finally, Bruno Junquera in a Toyota powered Lola. Breck's teammate raised the ante to 215 miles an hour, and that left one man, the fastest man in practice, Paul Tracy in a Honda Lola, but the Canadian Blink said he left something on the table in turns three and four of his two-lap run, and Bruno Jacquera picked up his second career pole almost a year to the day from his first in Nazareth, Pennsylvania last year. Here's a look at the top 10 in practice. <laughs> Welcome back to Motega, Japan, where we are basking in the sunshine right now. Kenny, you had a lot of sunshine last year. Successful. Can you repeat? Uh, well, I don't know, Derek, but uh, we're sure going to try. You've always got a smile on your face. I mean, you enjoy the festivities oh, as well as the actual racing activities, don't you? Yeah, it's a nice setting, especially here in Japan. Oh, the fans are really nice. You know, they're really uh, supportive, and um, it's a good feeling here. I uh, like this race. Okay, bend down. Let's see the stripe. Come on, bend down. See this? So what is this? Is this a go faster stripe? Uh, if you had to be not fair, you'd have one too. <laughs> I'd love to have that much air to put that stripe on it. <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Calvin. Thanks, Derek. Well, starting on the inside of row two alongside Kenny Brack will be Paul Tracy. Paul, the decision to make the switch to the Lola seems to have paid off thus far. Yeah, I'm uh, really happy with the car. It's uh. I think we have a good race set up, but we had a uh, small problem this morning. We had to do an engine change, so guys just, uh, I could just hear the car running now, just warming it up, so hopefully we're not going to have any more problems. How much did that hurt you with the limited amount of running with the Lola? How important was that warm-up this morning? I know you lost the majority of the session. Yeah, we didn't really get to run, but I did, uh, was able to run three, three, four, you know, kind of at speed to feel how the car was, but uh, really didn't get any running in traffic, but... Uh, I spent a lot of the weekend, you know, concentrating on how good the car was in traffic, so we'll just have to uh, wait and see. Well, Paul is certainly very comfortable with the Lola. A little bit further down the pit wall hill, going to catch up with his teammate, Dario Franchitti. The other Team Green cars are running Lolas this weekend, but Dario, you seem very comfortable with the Renard and made that decision yourself, I believe. You wanted to stick with the Renard for a little bit. Yeah, for this race, we wanted to stick with the Renard. We, we figured it's um, this track, there's not too much of a difference in performance. Um, and reliability-wise, we, we haven't really tested the, the Lola that much. So for this race, uh, I think it makes sense to run the Reynard. But uh, really, we'll find out in about a couple hundred laps exactly who made the right choice. Right, that's for sure. We've certainly seen Team Green, both the Motorola team and Team Cool Green, make some very uh, decisive strategy moves in the first two races and got results from that. Here on this oval with a very long pit lane, are people going to be a bit more conservative? Because if you make a green stop, it's going to cost you a lot of time on the track. Yeah, I think you're going to find everybody making you know, the same kind of calls today. Nobody's going to go out on a limb. Because you make the wrong call, you're going to go two laps down. Otherwise, you know, I think the way the, the, the cars are running here, the way the wings are, we can go from last to first, I think, is if the car is good enough. But you can't come back from two laps down. So uh, I think it will be conservative strategies. Racing here in Japan, Dario, great crowd on hand once again today. It has to give you a good feeling. You've got a lot of sponsors here, certainly NGK, Showa Shocks. I mean, you've got a lot of boys to keep happy here, particularly Honda. Yeah, you know, the, this is so important to Honda, it really is. This, this race, the effort they put in the whole season, but particularly this one race, they want to win this one race. It's very, very important to them. 
you know, and with their, their plans being uncertain for next year, this this probably is their, their last time here for a while. So you know, there's they, they want to win badly, and as sort of we, you know, I, I want to win here. That would mean a tremendous amount to me to to do something for those guys that win in this race. All right, Dario, good luck. Fest in qualifying was really a battle between the Toyotas and the Hondas. You start ninth here today, and the Fords have dominated the race situation here in Motegi. What do you expect today for yourself? Uh you know, I think we got a good chassis. I, uh, I was really happy with the car in the long run on Friday, and uh, I'm optimistic. You know, we're just a little bit off the pace, uh, and hopefully that's not going to bite us in the butt here today. But, uh, you know, it's it's uh, 300 kilometers. It's about two, no, it's 500 kilometers, 311 miles. So and it's going to require at least five pit stops with the windows they have. So that, a lot of things can happen. It's going to be a long day. A lot of people are saying this race is more like a 500 miler in terms of like a mini enduro and then you're going to race over those last 40 laps. I think, you know, the way things go these days, you're racing hard all the time. You don't want to, you don't want to find yourself getting a lap down or finding yourself too far behind. Um, I think there's an opportunity for, for somebody, if there's an early yellow, to get out of sequence and, and perhaps do something there because with the long, with long pit lane, you, if, if you have to stop in a green, you're going to go two laps down to somebody. You talk about that. I mean, it's really going to be, need to be a mistake-free race. I mean, any pit lane infraction, any drive-through is going to cost you bad. Anytime you want to win, it's got to be mistake-free. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting. The Hondas are very strong, and the Toyotas as well. I mean, Bruno put together a good lap yesterday. Uh, you know, I was, I was expecting to be a little farther up the grid. We, we had a few little, little glitches. Might have put us sixth-ish. But... Uh, you know, we're going to have to have a little race craft today to get up there. Jimmy V, good luck. Thank you. Michael, a, a huge win for you personally, but for this team also at Long Beach. And things look very good here in Japan also. Yeah, it's been a good weekend so far. You know, it's just uh, so far everything's working well. The Lola's been working good for us. And uh, Honda, I think, has given us a good engine for this race. So we're, uh, we're ready. Michael, tell me how big a job it is to change from Rainer to Lola in the middle of the season. I mean, it, that can't be easy. It's really a huge strain on the team. I mean, these guys are working night and day to get these things ready because you have to remember, we also have Ford Delaros at the shop as well for Indy. So they're just, uh, you know, there's cars all over the place, parts flying all over, and uh, but they're, they're doing a good job. They're being still really organized and so far so good. Thanks, Michael. Good luck. Well, a driver who has certainly dominated of late is points leader Cristiano D'Amata. Cristiano, you came to Japan, a little concerned about the oval setup. Not starting where you'd like to is really indicative of your speed here where you qualified? Well, yeah, it's pretty much uh, all we had. Uh, I think we made some good improvements from the last test we had on the ovals to here. We certainly weren't expecting to qualify on the top ten. Uh, we're progressing. on the. We're going, I think, uh, on the right direction, but... We're still not there yet. Uh, uh, we are a lot better than we when we started here, but still a little bit missing. We'll, we'll keep on working on that one and get a bunch of points out of this race. We see. Well, uh, I said I said that before. I, after I missed the pole in Long Beach for three thousands, I decided to <laughs> shave a little bit more weight. <laughs> All right, mate. Head on track as we go to break. I promised you yesterday a look at more of the film work of Californian Greg Gears. This is his interpretation of the action two weeks ago in Long Beach, California. the start of the race. One minute to go. Thousands of people are surrounding you. You have the, this little gap in your stomach. Butterflies. This is when I have the most nervous tension. The moment where I'm the most nervous. You can't wait for them to let you go. And it's kind of nerve-wracking. You're thinking about how do I get to the first corner. Focus on the racetrack. And you just want to beat everybody out. It's a good beginning for a great battle. All those emotions and more are about to unfold in the land of the rising sun.
Channel and Championship Auto Racing teams are proud to welcome you to round three of the Kart FedEx Championship Series for 2002, the Bridgestone Potenza 500. Hello, everyone. I'm Bob Barsha with Tommy Kettle and Scott Pruitt. First oval track race of the kart season. Let's get right to the pit lane and Derek Daly. The cars are about to pull out. Have a look at the grandstand behind me, jam-packed. However, there are still some seats available. But don't forget, right now, this is the largest crowd ever to come here to Motegi. The reason there isn't more people in, they didn't anticipate how good the weather would be, and they are jam-packed on the one road that leads into Motegi. So for the next hour, they're still going to be coming in here. Thanks, Double D. Well, I think the team and driver who wins here today in Motegi will have to be absolutely mistake-free. What the officials have done here, they've extended the pit lane speed limit area all the way down pit lane, of course, and then all the way around to turn two. And that means that the teams have calculated, even without any servicing, they'll be in pit lane for almost 70 seconds under that speed limit. So if they make a mistake either on the racetrack or a pit lane infraction, have to do a drive-through, that's going to dig them a big hole to try and get out of today. All right, thank you, guys. Here's a closer look at Twin Ring Motegi. If you've been with us all weekend, you know this is not one of those ovals where you pop it up into high gear and stand on it all day, Scott. And these guys love this track. Very, very fast one and two, but they have to brake and actually downshift in three and four. They can go side by side all the way through one and two, which is actually set a guy up getting down into three, set him up, get him coming on four. Here's a look at our race analysis. 201 laps of this 1.548 mile oval. A total of 311 miles or 500 kilometers. The mandatory pit window is 38 laps. That's as far as you may go on a load of fuel. Number of pit stops expected, a minimum of five, with 11 laps remaining to involve in your pit strategy. As Calvin mentioned, a 50 mile an hour pit lane speed limit, and it is a very long pit lane here. That will totally dictate race strategy because you cannot afford to get out of sequence. Jimmy said you might see guys out of sequence. It will not happen under green because that's too big a penalty to come back from if you get a caution. Okay, quickly, gentlemen, Derek Daly pricks Bruno Giancara to win. Calvin Fish likes Tony Kanaan. Who do you like? I have to go with Paul Tracy. I'll tell you what, him at the sharp end of the grid and really has a bounce in his step with that new Lola. I think Bruno's going to be tough, but I still got to go with PT. If Bruno makes it to the end, I think he's going to be tough for a while, but I got to go with PT. He's just shown so much speed coming out of the box with that Lola. For myself, I like Jimmy Vassar. I think he had everything he needed to win in Long Beach two weeks ago. I don't think he's going to make a mistake today. He's running for Team Ray Hall. They won four oval races on the schedule last year, including this one. I'm going to pick Jimmy Vassar in the shell car with Ford Power to keep Ford's winning streak alive. Four previous races here at Twin Ring Motegi. Ford powered cars have won all four times. Now as the field makes its way around, here is Tora Takagi's Toyota-powered machine for Walker Racing. Here is our starting grid on the pole for the second time in his career. Bruno Jancara starting alongside fellow Brazilian Tony Kanan, who was the quickest man in the morning warm-up. On row two will be Paul Tracy, who was the last man to go out in qualifying, but says he left something on the racetrack in turns three and four and missed an opportunity for pole. He'll be starting alongside Kenny Breck on row three. Tracy's teammate Dario Franchitti alongside Canadian Patrick Carpentier. On row four, Michael Andretti, the winner two weeks ago in Long Beach, and the series points leader, Cristiano D'Amata, with his new haircut, hopefully to give him some extra speed today. On row five, my pick, Jimmy Vassar, will start alongside rookie Townsend Bell. On row six, Tora Takagi, one of two Japanese drivers racing in front of a massive crowd of their countrymen today. Alongside will be Canadian Alex Tagliani. On row seven, Michel Jourdain Jr. having the best start in his seven-season career. In the champ cars, he'll be alongside Adrian Fernandez, who has simply had a miserable weekend thus far. On row eight will be Scott Dixon from New Zealand, last year's Jim Truman Rookie of the Year. He'll be alongside Christian Fittipaldi, who did not qualify well for the Newman Haas team. On row nine, Mad Max Pappas, coming off a third place finish in Long Beach two weeks ago. He'll be alongside Sinji Nakano, and on the 10th and final row, rookie Mario Dominguez of Mexico and Spaniard Oriol Servia. Cars continue to make their way around as the fans wave their flags from the grandstands. The Japanese have an interesting way of supporting their favorite teams in sporting events. They wave flags and beat on drums. To our onboard cameras, you're riding with Townsend Bell in the Vistion entry for Pat Patrick Racing. Now on board with Dario Franchitti wearing our visor view cam. And once again, back on board at the back of Tora Takagi's car. 
This is also going to be a big race for Cristiano D'Amato. You know, they've said openly they've had a big struggle in testing, so let's see what they can do today. A beautiful racetrack, a beautiful day for a race. The field forming up. Looks like Junkera made a bit of a jump right there, but now he falls back into line. Flagman Jim Swintal eyes them off the final corner. He has the green flag in hand. He waves it, and we're underway at Twin Ring Motegi for 500 kilometers. Big move for Tony. Tony going right out the outside right away. You heard him say in the pre-race, uh, it's not important who leads the first lap, but he went Buffalo Boy right around the outside, <laughs> and he uh, wants to lead lap one. Look at all the shuffling going on behind. Very wide, very smooth, except for that patch on the left of your screen. Very bumpy right there, heading into turn three. Looks like Kenny Brack made his way by teammate Bruno Junquera. So Brack, the defending Bridgestone Potenza 500 champion on the move. He is second behind Kanan, then Junquera, and the players' cars coming forward. Tracy making a big move. That's on Carpaccio. That <laughs> He's all the way up alongside, and now they have mandated the use of spotters. If you don't have a spotter, you'll be fine. So uh, that probably came into play there with Carpaccio being told outside. Riding along with Dario Franchitti, that picture on the hub of his steering wheel is Mr. Michihiro Asaka, vice president of Honda Performance Development. Those photos were distributed to all the Honda drivers, and they chose where they wanted to carry them in this race. Good shot on board with Townsend Bell. Behind Christian D'Amata. Started 10th. He's moved up one spot to 9th. Downshifts twice. You saw that. You could hear when he put it in the top gear there that the rev drop is only probably three or 400 RPMs. They stack the top gears really close because of the draft. It's different when you're in a draft or by yourself. And here comes Tora looking inside. He had a quick look at the lead opened up by Tony Kanan before we went on board with Tora Takagi. Driving for Walker Racing. It was announced this weekend that Derek Walker has purchased the assets of Reynard North America, the car builder that's gone into receivership in England. But there is a story developing there that may wind up in the courts. A British investor has bought the UK operation for Reynard. We're not sure who gets what. You saw Townsend there. It's hard to tell from this view, but he uh, was protecting the inside going into turn three. Tora took a quick look to the outside. There's no way to get around the outside going into turn three, is there, Scott? No way. Here's Tony Kanaan, who's been fast all weekend. He's really stretching it out, too. Mm -hmm. This would be big for Honda, for Pioneer, two Japanese companies. This win would be big. He's very confident with the car. Been very fast all weekend long. Well, the new race rules, these, uh, these fueling windows are aimed at putting the races back in the hands of the guys who run quickly. And so here with the, uh, the, the long extended 50 mile, here comes PT continuing to bring his way forward, getting underneath Breck. Tracy has already passed Shokara, looking at second place Kenny Breck ahead. He's on his way. <laughs> he is on his way. He's in a hurry, too. Remember, they had an engine change this morning after the warm-up. He's driving the Lola. He also had a Raynard at his disposal this weekend. He put in a good lap on Thursday practice, but then decided he wanted to try the Lola. Turned in an even faster lap, and he likes the car better. So he's using the Lola today. Taking a big loop up the inside there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's commitment right there, I'll tell you. He set that up in the middle of two. He's starting to work the high groove, able to keep some air on those wings, and was able to come off two quicker. Now, Jokera capitalizes on Brack having to... Ooh, Chip Ganassi's heart's in his throat right now. <laughs> Easy, boys. That's the thing these guys love about this track. They can go side by side down through one and two. They can get a good run down the back straight, out deep them down into three. And if a guy gets a little caught up just like that, can take a, take a look up underneath him coming off, coming off forward. Exactly what uh, Shunkara did. FedEx running order across the top of your screen, measuring last lap speed. It's going to be hard to keep up with these laps going down at 25, 26 seconds each. Now Michael Andretti going wheel to wheel with Dario Franchitti. Turns one and two were repaved during the offseason. The drivers say they are very, very smooth, flat out in one and two. Now, this is going to be real interesting. You know, Dario decided to stay with the Reynard because of consistency, all the miles that they have. It'll be interesting to see how it plays off with the other two Lolas. He also mentioned reliability. And given that left rear wheel hub problem that his teammate Paul Tracy had in practice, that might be a good decision. That's an interesting thing. You have both sides pointing the finger back at each other. Lola's saying it's the team assembly problem. The teams are saying it's the, the 2 upright. Uh, target Chip Ganassi's gone to the, stayed with the 0-1, as has Newman Haas. T 
Team Cool Green tried to, but could not get enough parts. So they're running that 0-2 upright where the bearing is a little bit iffy, apparently. Let's listen in as Frankiti drives. Let's look down. See him resting his hand there, giving his left hand a little bit of a break. You, you know, if you're not careful and you're not conscious of it, you can hold on to that steering wheel so tight you'll be worn out in a hurry. Straightaways are nearly a half mile long, but you eat them up in a hurry at 220 miles an hour. And see the crowd in the grandstands all the way around this beautiful racetrack. Tony Kanaan is your leader with 11 laps of 201 anticipated. Currently in the books, we'll be back with more from Twin Ring Motegi and the Bridgestone Potenza 500 here on Speed Channel. To Twin Ring Motegi, I'm Bob Barsha with Tommy Kendall and Scott Prude in the booth, Derek Daly and Calvin Fish in the pit lane, and action on the racetrack. With Mario Dominguez leaving Adrian Fernandez in the Takate car. Fernandez has had a brutal weekend. They could not get the car to run well. And those problems continue. They had a problem with a weight jacket earlier in the weekend, which helps, you know, keep up with the car over changing track conditions and basically disconnected the weight jacker. And we're hearing uh, early in the race, he complained about a possible explosion, maybe a plenum problem, robbed him of his power. Now, uh, it looks like he's back up to speed, but he is, uh, he's not having a good weekend at all. Here's his teammate going by him on the inside. Sinji Nakano. No action on the shift lever on the straightaways. But he'll either shift up or down when he gets to the corners. When I say plenum explosion, there's been a lot of plenum explosion in the past where it blows it right through the engine cover. Obviously, that didn't happen, but he complained of what heard like, sounded like an explosion behind him. He's currently running 19th is Fernandez. They're also getting some news that Jimmy might be having some problems. Jimmy Vassar. I heard that on the radio. Now, lap 11 here, back to what I said earlier in terms of the rules aimed at getting the guys back out, uh, back the emphasis back on speed. And so it still comes down to how do you do that? So the key word is, as our president would say, strategery. Who has the best strategery? <laughs> so, but you will not see guys. I worked in my hotel last night for a couple hours trying to come up with a getting out of sequence under green. You cannot make it work with that long extended pit lane so it will all the only time you will stop under green will be when you have to mandated by that 38 lap window the one guy obeying the command to roll is tony Kanan, who continues to extend his lead there is tracy tracy just called in heard on the radio my car is good real good <laughs> he is moving to the front that's exactly right he is so happy with this new lola i think we're gonna see big things from him all season long this one and a half mile track length is just terrific for these champ cars. They look so fast around this place. And consider a lap capturing pole at 215 miles an hour. Average speed, so a little bit lower than that going into one, and a lot faster than that heading down to three. The greatest thing about it is kind of the pinch nature where three and four is so much tighter. Three and four is a really tough corner. There's one or two downshifts, brakes, all that, how you get through the center of the corner. But one and two is flat out with two grooves. So you spend all that time trying to set up a pass. And it really, now that they've got some downforce and less turbulence back with this wing package, it's obvious that these guys can get around someone if they're quicker. I must admit, I don't know why Honda chose the particular dimensions for this racetrack they lavished so much money on. It's as though they went to the United States looking for oval tracks and went to Gateway and Darlington and decided, okay, that's what an oval's supposed to look like. We'll do it. I think talking to a lot of the guys, a lot of the drivers, they like these type of tracks. And we went to, I know that uh, Rio's a lot different, but uh, where you actually do something more than just stand on the gas on these ovals, it puts the, the driving back into their hands. Fastest lap of the race for Paul Tracy. Get a quick look at Bruno Jacquera, our pole sitter. He has consolidated third place for the moment. Comes Mario Dominguez, followed by the two PWR cars. Former Pac West team. We're hearing that this team is having money problems. They're desperately looking for some funding. Oriol Servia and Scott Dixon, last year's Rookie of the Year. And both these guys are real talents, too. It's an, it's an, this would be very unfortunate for Cart and especially for, for the whole team. There were a number of people trying to buy Scott Dixon's contract uh, during the offseason. He was very, very highly touted. Back to Tony Kanan in the Pioneer car. Now, the window has opened up, so if a yellow comes out, these guys will be coming in for the pit stop strategy for what they have to do. Lap 11 opens up, but they will not pit if it's green. They'll probably go all the way to 38. 
Now they come into traffic. You'll see PT try to capitalize on this. Tony's catching them at what looks like a pretty good spot. On board with Townsend Bell. Well, that's Fernandez. Here we are working lap number 17, and he's been caught by the race leaders already. Not good news for the only owner driver in the series, and only the third in card history following the late Tony Bettenhausen and, of course, Bobby Rahal. Here comes Paul. It's interesting, as he pulled up behind Fernandez, Canaan just seemed to ease up that little bit. I wonder if that's aerodynamic effect. These cars moved from the, the big barn door Hanford Mark II device they raced a year ago here at Motegi to the much more sleek wing package they used in the European oval races in Germany and England last year. The drivers love the change. They say they can get much closer to the car ahead, which should promote passing. Finally, Canaan goes underneath Fernandez and leaves that task to Paul Tracy, charging from second. We've got another break coming up as Kanan continues to work traffic. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Twin Ring Motegi in Japan and the Bridgestone Potenza 500 here on Speed Channel. To the right of your screen, race leader Tony Kanan is overtaking Christian Fittipaldi, who's been having a difficult time this weekend. For that matter, his teammate Tony Kanan, the series points leader coming in, also appears to be having problems finding speed on this one and a half mile oval. You ride with Dario Franchitti from Team Cool Green. Let's get down to the pit lane. This car owner, as well as that of Paul Tracy, is standing by with Calvin Fish. Well, Barry Green watches the progress of Paul Tracy. You lost the warm-up, essentially, Barry, but Paul's done a great job there in this opening stint. How's the car's balance? You know, his report, he, he says it's really good, so hopefully we can keep the balance. It's still very early in the race. Long race, Calvin, so uh, at the moment he's really happy. Uh, I think he's as quick as anyone out there, so we'll see. What about the strategy, Barry? You say it's a long race. How patient does Paul need to be for well, the we, opening half of the race? Yeah, we talked about patience, and that you know that's the problem with Paul. He gets very racy, but uh, he's he's acting real good, sensible right now. About ten laps away from a pit stop, so we'll see. All right, mate. Thanks a lot. One very busy man is Barry Green, with three teams to look after. Townsend Bell with a nice move on Kenny Brack at the end, going into turn three. I wonder if there's a problem for Brack. He was very quick at, at full tanks at the beginning of the race. Bell is another aggressive racer in the Paul Tracy mode. Had a few little problems. Too many bumps that last, uh, you know, right out of the box down in Mexico and then another one down at uh, Long, Beach. Long Beach. And Back off my boy there. <laughs> Southern hey, California man. guys. Looks like Brack's having some sort of problem. Seems like he's really starting to fall off the pace. Mm -hmm. That's Tagliani in the player's foresight car coming up behind him. It's another team that's been up and down all weekend. Tagliani spun in Thursday's second practice session. Oh, he just motors under Brack, the defending race champion. Expect some big things today from the players team. These guys are very solid on the ovals. That and Ford. Ford also seems like they've done a tremendous job with their consistency of the engine package we've seen for the last four years here. Qualifying there wasn't much to choose between Reynard and Lola, and uh, I was I'm a little bit surprised. I thought the race would kind of show that difference where downforce is really premium. And if you listen to everybody, that's what they talk about with the Lola. But you have Kanan and Tagliani looking good in Reynards. They know those things inside and out. But the question is, do they have enough speed? And right now, uh, it looks like they do. As you see, 31 laps in. First round of pit stops expected at lap 38. Thus far, no one has chosen to shortstop early on. Now that we're more than 11 laps in, it's unlikely anyone would. I guarantee you right now, there's a good... Canon just motor into the front. And he's and going he's around. Just... That's the other team, Ray Hall car. That was Michelle Jourdain Jr. The Ray Hall team dominated this race a year ago, but we saw Jimmy Vassar, we, or we heard Jimmy Vassar is having problems, and now we see the race leader rocketing past the other Ray Hall car, Michelle Jordan, Jordan in the Hikanti machine. We talked about some of the Chargers, uh, Townsend Bell, uh, Tony, and Scott Dixon being the man among team, team owners. Chip Ganassi tried to buy the contract of Tony Kanan, and this is why, when he has the right package, he is just very, very aggressive, a real Charger, tremendous attitude. And he's just set fast lap of the race thus far. 
I'm happy to see that track position is not a factor at all. If you're faster, you can get by people. And what that means is you don't have any guys saving fuel. If you get a one-groove racetrack, track, even with the new rules, you would have guys saving fuel so they have shorter stops. Oh, oh back up. here. Mario Dominguez up high. Cristiano D'Amata in the black Haviland car with Tony Kanan right there looking for a way by. This is what you talk about patience. That was a pretty aggressive move for the start of the race. Cristiano D'Amati in 13th place. And you can be sure he's looking for that first pit stop and making some changes on the car. I was a little surprised to hear him in the warm-up because warm-up he was second quickest, but in the pre-race he still was uh, expressing a lot of doubt about their race setup, and uh, it looks like it was well-founded. Well, as Derek Daly mentioned earlier, it is a bright, sunny day. We've not had consistent sunshine through both days of practice and qualifying here at Twin Ring Motegi, so I wonder if somebody didn't just miss on the setup as the sunshine warms the track. Pit stop's coming. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Bridgestone Potenza 500. Third round in the Kart FedEx Championship Series for 2002 and our two race leading cars, Tony Kanaan and Paul Tracy, are headed for their first pit stops. And this is exactly where the teams make the difference. Talk about teamwork. This is where all these guys have to have it come together. Down to the 50 mile an hour pit lane speed limit. And as we mentioned at the top of the program, they'll be there for a long time. That's Tracy on the bottom, Kanaan on the top. Calvin Fish awaits the stops. Tony Kanaan pulls his Reynard into his pit spot. Perfect start for the boys. Right behind him is Paul Tracy. They're running one and two on the racetrack. They're one and two in pit lane right now. Tire stop is completed. This is a pretty full load. Full load of fuel. Kanaan, and he just beats Tracy out as a drag race down pit lane. A 50 mile an hour drag race. Now what happens? We'll go all the way around to the exit to turn two at this speed. Who says these guys don't race wheel to wheel? <laughs> <laughs> now, you got to remember, this has happened because of what happened with Alex Zanardi. That's right, in Germany last year, that savage crash. Now, who's going to get the jump? Now, they're racing. There's a mark over here. I believe there's a blue cone. We might not be able to see it in the shot, where they will release that electronic speed limit. The shorter radius. There it there is. There it goes. It looks like Kanan went for the jump, but Tracy faster on the gas and takes the position ahead of Kanan. Let's see if he can hold it. That's got to be really odd with their heart. And look at this. Pack. Ooh. Takagi, one of the players' cars, Bell and Dario. More of the same on those pit lane speed limiters. On board with Bell. And these guys are coming out on cold tires. It'll take just a little bit for them to settle in, bring up the tire pressures. All of the front-running cars, well, all of the cars, period, came in on lap 38, as they must under the mandatory pit rules. There's Dario going underneath Townsend. Uh-oh. Oh, Jimmy Vassar. Big fire. Wow, that one is going. That's at the turn three overpass where the road course here at Twin Ring Motegi enters and exits the racetrack. That was on the pit exit. Everybody stopped on lap 38, so on his way out, something, maybe some spilled methanol. I wonder if something happened during the pit stop. Looks like some kind of fitting maybe came loose. The dark smoke means there's more than just fuel burning on that car. It's under control. We'll take a break and return to see if we can find out what happened to Jimmy Vassar. Well, Mark Johnson is overseeing Jimmy's car here. Mark, we saw the smoke. What happened out there to Jimmy? I don't know, Calvin. This looks like uh, we had a problem with the Buckeye. It was, few, it was spewing fuel out as we left the pit. We were trying to get him back in, but obviously he couldn't make it. It caught fire down in turn one. He's out of the car, and he's just fine. So that's the important thing. We'll just uh, get it back and take a look at it and see what went wrong. Tough day for Team Ray Hall. They had a great run there at Long Beach. DNF'd in the first round at Monterey. Another one here today for Jimmy Vassar. We expected to be a championship contender, guys. Yes, we did. Three races, two DNFs for Jimmy Vassar, and nobody need remind me my pre-race pick to win here at Motegi. What a frustrating day. We have a full course yellow out. No word yet as to when we will resume. Here comes Kenny Brack in. We saw him slowing 10 to 12 laps before it came time for the pit stop, so I wonder if there's a problem on the target car. 
could be that or it could be this is the this is one of the only ways you can get out of sequence you can get out of sequence on yellow what this would do is it would extend your window hoping that you get a yellow between when the leaders pit or the people that stay out pit and you have to come in with your new extended window that's the only way i can figure out that you could get out of sequence and maybe have it work out in your favor that's a good point that's, this may be deliberate to get ahead later on a lot of these guys taking gambles here this is this is the new aspect of car to be able to play these different gambles like this. And the way I look at it, it's not a big gamble because track position is not that important. You're at the back of the queue, but if you're quick, you can get back up there. So as long as you get... Oh, a plume of smoke there from Tora Takagi. Meanwhile, let's get back to the pits and Derek Daly. Dario Franchetti also going to take advantage of this yellow flag situation. Going to watch very closely to see, do they adjust the car? It looks normal so far. You hear the revs. Trying to race his team. Oh, Mike uh, Langrenigan almost stalled the thing and still hasn't still got it to run slow. properly yet. Dario Franchitti very, very slow down this pit lane and finally gets it to run. Wow, a lot of problems there getting out of pits. That's going to cost him a lot. And look, they're still under the speed limit and they've gone back to green. So either they didn't know that it was going to go back to green that time or they forgot about how long the pit exit speed limit goes. You wouldn't come in that late, would you? No, you wouldn't. That's a good strategy to extend your window, but it might catch them out if, uh, if it, depending on if they can get out here and get up to speed before the leader comes. And look, the, 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 oh, Dario's going to get lapped right now. That's Franchitti down low as his teammate, the race leader Paul Tracy, comes up behind him. Gently, boys. It can be very costly for Dario. And there's really nothing Paul Tracy can do here because he's got Tony Kanaan right there all over the back of him. That's exactly right. Side by side. This is one thing these guys love about this track. It is side by side racing through one and two. I'm not sure that's what Paul Tracy is loving right now. <laughs> racing his teammate while he's in the lead and Frank Eadie's a lap down. Tough break for the Scotsman. Well, if he's got the speed, I think Tracy will work with him. Here's Dario's nose to the right of your screen. If you look closely, you may be able to see his eyelashes. We've been having a lot of fun with this visor view cam all weekend here at Motegi. There's Kenny. I mean, uh, Tony Kanaan going down the inside. Exiting turn two, going down the back straight. Now, it's interesting. They go down two gears, going down into three. Shift up once, going down into one, and then another time, upshift going down into, uh, into turn four, about halfway between, I'm sorry, halfway between two and three. Love that visor view camera. You'll only see it here on Speed Channel. We've got more little tricks in the pipeline, so stay with us all season long. Now, what does Dario Franchitti have to hope happens now for him to get back on terms? Well, the only thing that happened is if they, that extra few laps of window that he has, if there's a yellow in that time and he's able to come around and then get another yellow shortly thereafter, he can get back on. But that's a lot to ask for. Paul Tracy leads Tony Kanaan. 38 laps to the next stop for the front runners. Good race for Kanaan. First two races of the season have produced two DNFs for the Brazilian. He would dearly love to score his first points of the season here. Let's get down to Calvin now with Jimmy Vassar. Well, Jimmy V has made his way back to the pit lane. He's talking to the crew right now. Jimmy, what happened on the pit stop? Were you aware of a problem? I, I, yeah, I was the first one to see it. I left. I looked at my rearview mirror to see who was coming down behind me, and I was blowing fuel about that far out of the Buckeye. And I, I, I told him, I said, I'm blowing fuel. That, 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 uh, I didn't, didn't really reply, and I was, I was going to bring it back in, or hopefully I was gonna, maybe the Buckeye would set close and stop it. But it, 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 it didn't stop, and then, then it fired up, and it was flaming out, caught fire in the back. And then the flames started coming, rushing up to, you know, to where it's blowing out, I thought. Time to get out, right? I got flames on my helmet, but that's not <laughs> that's not what kind of flames I want, you know. So, you know, I parked it there. I, you know, it was just blowing fuel and fire, and I, I, it's time for me to leave this deal. Tough to see Jimmy V out of this one. He hoped to get some points here today in Japan, but the one of the Ford runners is out at least at this stage. Let's see what the other boys can do. All right, thank you, Calvin. A long way to our next round, the Miller Lite 250 on the Milwaukee Mile, the weekend of June 2nd. In the meantime. Many as eight of these CART FedEx Championship Series drivers will attempt to qualify for the Indianapolis 500 on Memorial Day weekend. This is the battle up front. Tony has closed that gap right back down. He's uh, 
right up on top of Paul. One of the guys just announced is Max Pappas going to the going to the 500 and having a great run here today. He's all the way up to seventh. These guys have not had any testing coming into this race, any oval testing coming in this weekend. A little tough getting out of the box, but now they have a good solid run. In fact, they brought just one chassis to the race this weekend. Run what you brung for the new Sigma Autosport team. Looked like uh, Tracy pushed up a little bit in one and two, and Tony was able to take a little bit tighter line and really closed up down the back straightaway. One and two is supposed to be flat out. I heard on board with Dario a little like probably one eighth lift, just a teeny crack right in the center of the corner. But uh, with fresh tires, you can probably drive right through that. But if the front end starts taking off on you, you, you can keep your foot in it, use up some more track, but it really gets a lot of scrub going, doesn't it, Scott? Especially, you know, thinking about how long it is from the time you exit four to get around into turn three. It's a lot of time. You gotta get through three and four very, very good. And if you don't, you're gonna get caught up. That time it looked like you got a lot better. And see, Tony wasn't able to catch back up to him. So those dark patches on the front straightaway. They also run drag racing shows here at Twin Ring Motegi using the front straightaway. Is that blown Hemi uh, Civics? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can't call it an import series over here, can you? On board with Townsend Bell. by Sinji Nakano, wearing Twin Ring Motegi sponsorship this weekend. That is not Townsend. That's Tora. Tora Takagi. Currently running fifth. Highest of the uh, Japanese boys. I think Shinji summed it up in his interview when he said, this is a very big lace. <laughs> That'll be enough. Thank you, TK. Mario Dominguez. The three, three wide down into one. one. Cristiano D'Amato just wow. Oh! They did oh. <laughs> wow. This is for the lead. Kanan underneath. I think he put another O in cool on the side pod of Paul Tracy's car there. Paul battled back on the outside. That was, I don't know if they touched, oh. but you wow. couldn't have slid a piece of paper between those two boys. 250 miles an hour. What's up? Well, look who's right there as well. Bruno Jancara now moving up into this battle for the lead. Paul and Tony fighting up front. Slowed him down a little bit. Looks like Bruno's catching up. Yeah, that looks like a familiar face. That looks like the guy staring out of Dario's steering wheel. Since we know they're not uh, opposed to giving a little bit of love, I want my picture on the steering wheel. <laughs> now that the bar has been set, if you want to have me blow smoke at you for the rest of the season from the broadcast booth, I want to be on your steering wheel and show on the interview. Dario Franchitti is married to Ashley Judd, and he has a picture of Mr. Osaka-san on the steering wheel hub. What's wrong with this? Mikey's picture. getting ready to go a lap down. And there's your Long Beach winner, Michael Andretti. In that unfamiliar Lola, but they had enough confidence in the car that they chose to bring two of them for Michael. He did not have a radar to switch to. Unlike and the Mata. Oh, oh, here's Bruno getting underneath. He got caught up. Tony got caught up a little bit behind Michael getting down in there. And you saw, we talked about that earlier. Got slowed down just a little bit. Bruno got underneath him coming off turn four. Tony kept his boot in it. Uh, Bruno had to pinch it a little bit coming off. It, uh, Tony was able to keep the revs and the boost up a little bit higher, but look at this battle. Now, Bruno, I think, is looking very cautious, which we haven't seen from him in the last couple races. This could pay off for him at the end. Maybe not having Chip screaming in his ear is uh, something <laughs> down a little bit. Chip's not here this weekend. Chip Ganassi, the owner of Target Chip Ganassi Racing. They are once again this year this making... This a replay. Yep, replay. Do they touch? Wow. <laughs> So close. We'll be right back to Twin Ring Motegi. You and your short. Welcome back. Not quite one third of the way through the Bridgestone Potenza 500 here at Twin Ring Motegi. Round three of the Cart FedEx Championship Series for 2002. Paul Tracy leads Tony Kanan, but our pole sitter, Bruno Jacquera, is right there. Be sure to watch the Spanish Formula One Grand Prix from Barcelona here on Speed Channel. Sunday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Peter Windsor will kick things off with all the news from the paddock and the race itself. Speed Channel is your home for Formula One. And for the Kart FedEx Championship Series, I'm Bob Varsha with Tommy Kendall and Scott Pruitt in the announce booth. Derek Daly and Calvin Fisher in the pit lane. A beautiful day for a race in front of a big crowd in Japan. This is Michael Andretti. He's had a miserable time in the race thus far, mysteriously slow. He's already a lap down. 
his teammate Paul Tracy who leads Tony Kanan and Bruno Giancara. And Paul just called in. We just heard him on the radio say, no change to the car. It's just perfect. Now, and Michael, I think Michael getting lapped, it's, it's unlike uh, Cristiano. Michael is more a function, he and Dario both, of trying to extend their window and get caught going to green. I think Michael is actually on the pace. Now, obviously, he got passed by the leader, but he's not running horribly. So if they can somehow figure out a way to uh, pull some magic, get back on the lead lap, he's still in the hunt. I think he's running well enough. Now, coming up on about 10 laps before these guys have to make another mandatory pit stop. If the yellow comes out before that, they will be in. If not, I'm sure they'll stretch it right to that. Here's Cristiano DeMero. Look at that number for DeMata, 19th place. For the hottest driver in the series coming into the weekend with three victories in the last four races. This could be a real hiccup for the team. You know, they, they go from here, they do have a month off. I'll guarantee they'll be doing some testing on some ovals. These guys are not going to the 500. Coming in, DeMata said, I'm concerned about our oval track package, and if he has a race that that 19th place would indicate he's going to have right there, that is not good news for the points leader. I have a hard time understanding. You have Newman Haas Racing, who is the importer, and you have Paul Tracy just showing up for the first time running probably the box stop setup. And so either they need to poke someone and get a setup, and look at that, driving around the outside of Cristiano, uh, just intercepted a radio communication. The crew said, Cristiano, stay in the car. You are still moving. <laughs> I mean, that is, oh, my God. That is tough for Cristiano. Points leader and just a non-factor. Well, he had a, a misfire problem during qualifying that caused him to basically abort his second timed lap. I'm wondering if there's not more engine problems for the points leader. On board with Dario Franchitti once again. Now, these guys are just thinking, you know what? We're quarter way, pushing to halfway. Let's be smart. Let's be heads up. We've still got a lot of a lot of race left. Let's just be smart right now. That's the feeling I get from Dario, just right in the hunt. I mean, he's a lap down because of that thing, but really running a nice, uh, big-picture type of race. Tony and Paul up front. Bruno, you said, is looking a little more patient, but Tony and Paul up front are saying, hey, let's take it to these guys. And, th and that is a thing. If you can really bury some guys, get a bunch of guys a lap down, then you can back it off and cruise. So you've got two different schools of thought on that. While we watch this action, spare a prayer for the family of one of our Speed Channel colleagues, Bob Aiken, a two-time winner of the 12 Hours at Sebring and a veteran of vintage sports car competition, critically injured in a practice crash during the Walter Mitty Historic Weekend at Road Atlanta, Georgia. He's in the hospital, critical condition. Our thoughts are with his son, Bobby, who works for Speed Channel, his wife, Ellen, the entire Aiken family, and all their friends. On board with Townsend Bell. All these guys just kind of settling into a groove right now, talking back to the pits, talking back to the engineers, going, okay, what kind of changes are you going to make? Because on pit stops, you're really limited. You can make a front wing change, which is fairly quick. You can make a tire pressure change. A little bit of traffic coming up here. Get around Damata, and uh, I guess I think that's Tora right in front of him. Had to. Oh, this is for position. Look at the right front of his nose there. Pops the up. shock cover keeps popping up. Not doing it now. That was a pass for a spot as Bell moves up one. I think what that is is a little shallow. You get into the draft, you have a low pressure area, and all of a sudden that thing pops up. Ooh, Ooh. Mario Dominguez tries to go under. That is shutting the door. Takagi racing aggressively here in front of his home fans. Well, he got the point across to Dominguez, who immediately dropped back about four car lengths. Paul Tracy remains the leader by a half second over Tony Kanaan. He'll be back to Motegi. Welcome back to the Brimstone Potenza 500 at Twin Ring Motegi. Paul Tracy is the race leader. He has consolidated that position, and here's why. The number two man on the track, Tony Kanan, is heading for the pit lane. Calvin Fish is waiting for the Brazilian. Tony Kanan pits at one lap earlier than Paul Tracy. He comes in on lap 75. They may have made this decision to get him into the pit box a little bit sooner and see if Tony can get a better outlap. Once again, we've got a lot of fuel. Another perfect pit stop by the Pioneer boys. And a bit of tire smoke on the way out. I believe he shuts off the traction control before he exits the pit lane. One possible explanation for coming in a lap early might be uh, to avoid what happened to Cristiano DeMata at Long Beach. If you have enough of a lead like that, you could be coming out when everybody else is coming in. I don't know. That's, that's just speculation. Tracy makes his stop. Looks good and clean. Team Cool Green squad. 
Takagi. Might have clipped that air hose ahead of him. Having said that one theory I had, you still, to pit even one lap early, if the yellow had come out on that lap, everybody else can wait and they'll extend their 38. And so the risk of pitting before that 38 laps up is tremendous if a yellow comes out. Well, what they did was because Paul is right behind him, Paul would have been coming in at the same time. So there would have been guys running around the car who would have been more confusing and it would have tripped them up just a little bit, a second or two. But a second or two, when you're running 200 plus miles an hour, is a lot of, a lot of time. There's absolutely no net effect if it stays green, but if it exactly. goes yellow. And now here's that window for Dario and Michael. If they can get a yellow in this short window before when they have to come in, they would be able to get that lap back. But uh, it's a very short window, I think four or five laps. So the new race leader, Kenny Brack, the defending champion at the Bridgestone Potenza 500. You're on board with Townsend Bell as he exits following his second stop. Now you got to look at, right in front of him is Tor Takagi. He had just a little bit quicker pit stop. This is where your pit guys really pay off. Faster on the racetrack, but lost it in the pit. On the first stop, you saw that illustrated it was only a matter of about a car length and a half. Paul Tracy came in right behind. When they got onto their speed limits, he was right next to him. So they made up, you know, just a fraction of a second over the Monon guys. Michael Andretti now up into second place with the benefit of the pit stops. Coming up behind, I believe that's Patrick Carpentier up ahead. And Dario. And Dario Franchitti. These two guys should be in it shortly. Sinji is going very slow. Getting back up to speed after look. his stop. Mm -hmm. Two Honda-powered machines. One of the Honda executives this weekend said there are bonus clauses written into all the Honda team contracts providing a bonus if you win this race. The biggest of the year for the Honda-powered teams. This is huge. I mean, this is the... Uh, here, Ken, Kenny Brack's on his way in. Kenny Brack down to 50 miles an hour, agonizingly slow. He's headed for the target Chip Ganassi Racing Pits. Calvin Fish waits for him there. Kenny Brack makes his way down pit lane. It must seem like an eternity when you're the leader and the other guys are out there under green flag running, but he hits the marks. And the team target boys go to work. We're not expecting any ch uh, changes here on the race car. I believe Kenny's happy with the balance. Now they were making front wing adjustment. Kenny He's back underway, another good stop, and he has a clean exit here, being the final man down pit lane. Michael Andretti ascends to the race lead. Those laps in the lead for Kenny Breck meant more donations to Target House 2 at St. Jude's Children's Medical Research Center in Memphis, Tennessee. $1,000 for Bruno Jacquera's poll, $5,000 if one of the Target Ganassi drivers wins the race. Dario Franchitti pits. This is, this is a great shot. Really seeing what's going on, what's going through his mind on his way out with Dario. It seems like forever. <laughs> oh, Race leader Michael Andretti is in to Derek Daly. Here is Michael. He brings it in right as soon as Dario leaves. They both said no changes. Watch the fuel as soon as the tires are done. They measure the fuel in time. Oh, how frustrating. Oh, he stalls it. Michael stalls it. Valuable time. Remember, in green conditions, you can lose three laps here. So very costly for Michael. Oh, he stalls it again. He had clutch trouble yesterday, right before the qualifying session. He has the same problem today. Oh, my. Oh, Pat Tracy, right front wheel. And the car immediately down on the under tray. He was off the pace already and the tire blew but you see the wheel cocked out the wheel was stopped i think now remember those bearing problems he had at the left rear in practice now the right front this is a tough break for these guys this, this might pay, you know this was one of the things that was concerning dario coming in we have not spent that much time with these lower cars and with michael having some problems and now with paul very tough luck all the coring force is converted into heat in those bearings, so it's very critical the size of the bearing. They actually went to a bigger bearing in the O2 upright, but something about the new upright in the assembly, for whatever reason, is causing lots of problems. And Tommy, you were talking about there was a couple teams that ran the O1s, right? They run the O1s, and the Lola people are saying they should be running the O2s because the O2 has a bigger bearing, better able to cope with the heat. Well, Newman Haas and Target Chip Ganassi says, uh, thanks for the recommendation, we'll stick with O1. Well, it looks like they knew something. And those are longtime Lola teams. Looks like he's also picked up some debris 
That's the, the uh, actually that's the uh, uh, cooler. Brake, brake duct wheel brake duct cooler, cooler that's right. popped off the inside of the upright. Wow. Now the wheel's frozen completely. After more than 30 laps in the lead, Paul Tracy's race is over. Just dominating this race. Looks to have a great day here. But this is what happens. I mean, when you change a car like this, you don't have a lot of time. These kind of things will happen. A major Honda player follows by the wayside. But it, what he will take from here, every oval for the rest of the year, Paul, even though he's disappointed, he knows they are in the hunt now. I also saw some debris come off the car at the right front corner when that problem developed. We'll have to see if they throw a yellow. Stay with us. There you see what's left of the right front wheel of Paul Tracy. And Paul, you got the car back to pit lane. What happened on the racetrack? Uh, the, I, it went, the wheel bearing went funny on me, and then, and then I tried to get it back, and it just it blew the whole wheel apart. The wheel bearing just came apart, and it blew the inside of the rim right out. So it's a disappointing day for, for Team Cool Green, and we were the class of the field today. And I was really just, just taking my time. So, you know, you it's felt so comfortable with this car, Paul, right from the get-go. The third lap out, you were the fastest yeah. man on the racetrack in practice, and uh, the early laps here just sensational. Yeah, I mean, the car was perfect. The balance was perfect. Uh, but, uh, you know, these are the kind of problems you have with a new car. I mean, I guess this is a bit of an issue with the wheel bearing. A lot of guys are running last year's uprights, and we couldn't get any. Nobody would sell us any, so we had to go with what the new spec, and it's obviously not good enough. A tough day for Paul. He had a great run there. What he's talking about is that Chip Ganassi Racing and Newman Haas have been running the 2001 uprights. They had some concerns about these lower uprights. A lot of work to be done between now and our next race. The Miller Lite 250 at Milwaukee on the mile. We'll have practice coverage Friday, May 31st at 3 p.m. Eastern. Card Friday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. And you're going to want to join us for that, trust me. Saturday, June 1st, qualifying. Single car once again on the Oval at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then Sunday, June 2nd, race coverage beginning at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Stay with us all season long. The Cart FedEx Championship Trail here on Speed Channel. There is Max Pappas. And we have a yellow flag now. Problems for Mad Max. Unconfirmed. We hear there's a story that, that Tora and Max both had sorting out the situation. There you see Bruno Jancara down on the track apron. Now this yellow flag will affect pit strategies. Now they see the signboard. That's the plus sign, meaning lead lap cars only may pit. But it's on the other side, so it was a negative. Oh, it's not plus on both sides. Uh -huh. that shows how often I've taken the sign. I'm not sure. I think it has plus on both sides. I think we saw the I believe it does. This is there. Jacquera to show those behind what it is. Now the caution is for debris. No doubt from Paul Tracy's right front wheel issue. Tony Kanaan on his way. Quick stop. Both target Ganassi cars in. Oh, Jukera. <laughs> Gently. This is a yellow flag. Cutting hairs on his way out. Maybe that was my problem on his way. Didn't know what was going on out there. The results didn't show too many problems from what I can see. This is down in turn one and two. There you see another of the tunnels that allow the FIA spec road course here at Twin Ring Motegi to enter and exit the Oval. It's a beautiful facility suited for so many different kinds of motorsports. The only problem is Derek Daly mentioned at the top of the show, getting in and out of here can be a problem if you're not staying at the track hotel. Getting in and out of the pits too. This takes forever for these guys. It's about 55, 56 seconds from the time they leave the pit stall on their way out. Takagi and Frankiti. Getting word, Max Pappas has committed a pit lane violation. He'll have a drive-through penalty in his future. Drive-throughs must be served under green, so he'll have to wait until, the, until they go green. Good point. Adding insult to injury as Tora Takagi makes his way back out. I mentioned that Walker Racing has agreed to buy the assets of Reynard Cars North America. Card has chosen to freeze its chassis regulations as of the end of this year, meaning you can develop your Reynard or Lola through the end of the year, but then the chassis regs will freeze rather than going to the new chassis specs that were designed to match those of the rival Indy Racing League beginning in 2003, but those plans have become much more complicated. A lot of smoke coming out of the back of uh, 
Townsend I would Bell. say that's uh, Townsend Bell's car. Now, what's going on right there is just it's just dumping a little extra oil through the turbo, and then you're seeing that smoke. That's continually, we see that race after race. Not a problem, just a bit of an issue. It's always with the Toyotas, is it not? Always with the Toyotas. Exactly right. I believe they'll use a single wastegate on those turbochargers, whether that affects the situation mechanically or not. I'm not experienced enough to tell you. But we'll take a break and be right back. Speed check. Welcome back. Still under yellow here in the Bridgestone Potenza 500, along with Scott Pruitt and Tommy Kendall. I'm Bob Varsha. Calvin Fish and Derek Daly are in the pit lane. Temperature is expected to reach the low 70s, much warmer than these drivers and teams have seen through two days of practice and qualifying here in the highlands northeast of Tokyo. Now there's Max Pappas's Sigma Autosport car in the pits looking at the right rear and Pappas is climbing out. Bad news. It's going to be a tough break for this team. They've been doing real good. And we come back to green. Jim Swindoll waves the green. We're back underway. Three cars now officially out. Jimmy Vassar, who caught fire after the first round of pit stops. Paul Tracy, who had a right front wheel bearing fail. And now Max Pappas. They're talking about Max. They're saying it's a brake problem, but the wheel bearing can have that effect. What happened with Paul Tracy, you saw what cut the wheel actually is when the bearing goes, the spindle tips and it puts the wheel in contact with the brake caliper. Same thing can happen at the rear and as that spindle tips, the pedal gets really long because the pads get kicked back. So it wouldn't surprise me. That's another O2 Lola upright. So this is something to watch with the other O2 Lolas and also the O1s supposedly better like Junkera. But is it enough to deal with the heat and stress of these high banks? Trying to get by some lap cars. Getting caught up a little bit. Jim Carrey to the inside. Three wide. Oh, that's Scott Dixon, the New Zealander. They sandwich. Pulls it off. And Kenny Brack's in the pits. This has got to be unscheduled. Now, both Brack and Carpentier came in a number of times during that last yellow, like Dario and Michael, and did it properly. They did it. They were able to extend their window out, but obviously this is a different problem they're coming in for. And Jim Cover comes off. And Jim Kara. Ooh, Jim Kara under uh, Canon. Wow. That was aggressive. Great move. Right down the inside. Townsend Bell is able to catch up just a little bit. Look at this. Townsend Bell. Strong, solid third. And Jim Kara, so much for patience, huh? We're 100 <laughs> laps into this. <laughs> okay, well, I thought he had a lot of patience. Patience is a relative term with racing drivers. Here comes Tony right back. Wow, this is a great seat. Obviously, turn three is the place to do your passing. No sign of that the shock cover flipping up again. Boy, Tony is just very confident with his race car. Put it anywhere he wants it. Extremely happy with it all weekend long. And here you have, I mean, this is perfect. The run Jim Kara has. Tony protects down the inside, says if you're going to do it, you're going to have to go the long way. Although that's where Kanan was when they went around Scott Dixon. He managed to hold the spot. Quick stop for Brack. Now that long haul around to the release point outside turn two. Okay, now this is a Reynard Honda Lola Toyota. How about that? These guys are racing head to head. And behind it, Townsend Bell. And not too far behind Bell is Tagliani pulling himself up into the picture. You got the top four guys going at it. Let's get to Derek Daly in the pits with Mad Max. Max, I can see the frustration to run in sixth place and then to have it all fall apart. What happened? I brought the Sigma car up there, you know, passing people on the outside. I think I was running very strong. And unfortunately, we have, uh, you know, a rear caliper failure. I guess that uh, we've been running too long on those. Sorry, Max, a great run, particularly coming on the heels of what happened at Long Beach. I thought we would have we would finish again on the podium. The car was very, very strong. Unfortunately, though, you know, we came here again with only one car, not so many spares, and uh, that's what can happen. But uh, we're going to recover and come back really strong. Absolutely, I believe that. Finally, that smile we've come to expect from Mad Max. We can now look ahead to his drive, his attempt to qualify, I should say, for the Indianapolis 500, driving for Eddie Cheever's Red Bull team. He'll do a great job there. Those guys, <laughs> I'm not sure about their personalities, so I'm <laughs> anxious to see those two guys together. Cheever, Thomas Schechter, and Max Pappas. Hmm. Give you the TK translation when he says uh, that caliper might have been on there a little too long. 
that team, even though it has Rockwell on there, it is being funded out of Tom Waringa's pocket. And so when he says short on spares, I read that as not quite enough money to make sure they have everything at their disposal. Kenny Brack back in. Problems for the defending race champion. He's having a lot of problems with something going on in the back there, something on the engine department. You see him coming in, taking a rear cover off continually. Back on track and on board with Townsend Bell, continuing his great run. Here's our Bridgestone race summary. The leader is Tony Kanan. 51 laps led. Remember, there's a championship bonus point for leading the most lap. Two cars. And we know it's three cars out of the race now with Max Pappas's exit, in addition to Jimmy Vassar and Paul Tracy. Ooh, little... That onboard you shot, you saw him get in a little bit hot and wash up a little bit in the middle, and he had to wait a little bit to pick up the throttle, and you saw just that little delay. He was closing on the Junkera in front of him, and it just gapped it right back out. There's a look out the back. As he comes under attack. Alex Tagliani on the march. He's had a difficult weekend. Getting up onto a possible podium position would be great for the Canadian. And Dario Franchitti, first of the cars, a lap down. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Bridgestone Potenza 500. Time for the first of our Toyota Spotlights. Recapping the action in the race to this point. The field took the green flag with Bruno Jacquera edging into an early lead from pole position, but not for long as Tony Kanan was on the charge, goes around the outside of the pole sitter to take the lead in turn two. On lap 33, bring around to pit stops. Kanan and Paul Tracy, who had an engine change after the morning warm-up, came out of the pits wheel to wheel, went all the way around to the acceleration lane at the exit of turn two, and Tracy took the race lead. Jimmy Vassar came into this race with high hopes after a second place two weeks ago in Long Beach, but a pit problem allowed fuel to hit the hot, exhaust headers, and a fire ended Vassar's day. Tora Takagi has been burping smoke out of his Toyota engine for the last 25 laps or so, but he appears to be healthy. Not so Paul Tracy, who lost the bearing in the right front wheel of his new Lola chassis. It carved the wheel in half, and Tracy's dominant run was finished. Tony Kanan in a Reynard with Honda Power for Mo Nun Racing at the event where he put Mo Nun's new team on the podium for the first time a year ago. He's had a solid run at the front. Max Pappas, Brake problems at the right rear corner of his Lola. The Italian's race is over. Three cars now out of the race. As we continue around the 1.548 mile oval here at Twin Ring Motegi in Japan. Bob Varsha, Tommy Kendall, Scotty Pruitt, along with Calvin Fish and Derek Daly. Glad to have you with us for round three of the CART FedEx Championship Series. There's Townsend Bell in the bright orange Visteon car for Patrick Racing. With Alex Tagliani drawing ever closer in that Ford-powered player's Forsyth machine. These guys are having a great run together. Now, all these guys are just measuring each other up right now, seeing how they can drive them, how they can run them hard, that and, and seeing where the cars are strong and, and where they have to protect themselves a little bit. Four cars on the lead lap. Dario Franchitti running fifth as a lap down after pitting just before probably... Whoa, one he's way up high up. He Let's wiped out of the wall. And look at that, he's still defending. Tagliani says, I'm coming through. See, we saw that a little bit before on the onboard. He pushed up a little bit, exactly. and he really had to breathe it coming out. But obviously, he's fighting a handling problem at the front of that car. So I'm not sure how hard he got into it. It looks like he, I'm not sure if he just touched it or got into it a, a good bit. Definitely got up there and let, I think you'll see a black mark on the wall when we come around this time. There yeah, there it is. Boom, boom. Looks like he got it front and rear. The third place now goes to Alex Tagliani, who got very few laps in the opening practice, spun in the second practice, got into his backup car after a turbo problem in his primary, and rocketed up to, I believe it was third or fourth on the timesheets in just a handful of laps. Take another look at what happened to Townsend Bell. Got up high, out got of the up. groove. Oh! oh. That's a good at, shot. Oh, I'll tell you what, he wasn't slowing down much after that. No. He's still on it. This is coming off the contact. Watch Tagliani loom in his rearview mirrors. Did, did you see that magnesium flash when the wheel blasted the wall? Last time I saw that was at Indy when Nigel Mansell went out on board and you saw a big magnesium flash. And that's also the last time I saw a guy hit at 200 miles an hour and not come into the pits. That, that is a lift. brave young boy in that Vistion car. 
to the front. Kanan. These guys want to run. The engineer tell them, hey, you don't got to run that fast. He says, but this is where I'm comfortable. This is where the car is good. And with someone up front forcing the pace like that, it actually changes the strategy all the way back through. As Jimmy said, you can't afford to go a lap down. And so guys might be running harder than they want to to, to keep a reasonable gap to Kanaz. Tor Takagi now closing up on Bell, who appears to be just that little bit off the pace now. It's a pretty believe. good lick for not coming in. I can't yeah. believe he's still out there. I, he's brave. I'm not saying I feel smart, but he is brave. <laughs> yeah, don't get those two confused. <laughs> comes Takagi. There's the view from Takagi's car looking ahead at Bell. You get a sense for the mountaintop nature of this racetrack. $450 million from Honda included a lot of earth moving. The altitude is only about 530 feet above sea level. And it is an, an amazing engineering project. And as you see, grandstands nearly all the way around. And some 72,000 fans, the announced attendance today, that will bring the three-day total to over 100,000 fans this weekend. It's a Again, little cold little, weather earlier on. That's good. A little blurry out the back there, but you saw as Takagi has a run. A little blurry, but there was, you could see a good view of the bump going into turn three and four. The front of Takagi's car just really pops up there, and that's right where you're downshifting. And so that, I'm surprised we haven't seen more guys twitch. Michael oh. Andretti. We saw him have apparent clutch problems earlier. The car stalled a couple of times. This is certainly not the way he wanted his race to end. Both Team Cool Green Lola's out. Exactly. Raynard still humming along. Uh, and that's the problem. I mean, you got to put a lot of miles on these cars and figure out exactly what's going on. Race, race for the lead. Pass for the lead. Jack Kanan, Kanan, is Kanan off the pace? Or is that just... Doesn't look like it. Oh, Although oh. Jankara did pass him with ease. He did. Looks like he's pulling out, too. Get back to Michael's story in just a moment. Now Jim Kerr extending that lead. I wonder if Tony's having some sort of problem. Now he's coming back on. Oh boy, he hustled it into three there. Or he was just uh playing. There's another look. Looks like Bruno just had a good run. And it took him a while to, to kind of get his, his steam back up and come back on. They kind of pinned him up high there in the entrance to three. I wonder if he was concerned about getting into that gray area that claimed Townsend Bell just a few moments ago. Let's get down to Derek Daly now with Michael. Michael, Michael. It looked good and then the thing started to fall apart around you. Yeah, first with the clutch. We had a clutch go and a pit stop. So it was kind of in the, tough in the pit stop without a clutch. And then uh, the wing broke, but the car came really good. We were running as quick as everybody out there, and he, so. But we were already a couple laps down. It would have been dependent on yellows anyway. Mike, it might be a blessing that you got in here with that broken wing. Where did the wing break, and how did you feel it? Well, thank God, Kim. Kim was on the ball. He saw it when I was going down the straightaway, and he said, "Slow down, slow down." Broken wing, and I looked, and it was just hanging on. So, thank God, he told me before I got to turn one. Good. Thanks, Michael. And Kim would be Kim Green, who runs Michael's Motorola program for Team uh -oh. Green. This is Tony Kanan, and there's smoke scheduled. from the engine bay. This is bad news. The fire right in front of the rear wheel, too. Oh, yeah. Just below the flick-ups there. We saw him oh, off the pace. God, what a heartbreak oh. for Tony. Met the strongest Honda. Now with Paul Tracy out, Kanan out. Uh, who's the next Honda? Michael Andretti out. Dario Franchitti is a lap down. Things looking grim here in Honda's home ballpark. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Motegi. One thing the Hans device does is limit your dejection. When you drop out of a race, you have dominated as Tony Kanan has until just moments ago. Let's get down to Calvin Fish in the pit lane. Well, total devastation for Tony Kanan. Tony, you had such an unbelievable car there in the early going. And this race so important to you, I know, to get the season going here, and particularly for Honda. What are your feelings right now? The worst, but uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, all can I say is I did my best. And uh, we've been having a lot of problems since the first race, three and a half in a row. 
I think people really going to need to work hard to figure out what's going on because uh, today we had a winning car. I did my best. I don't think anything else I can do. Unfortunately, I feel sad right now, but at the end of the day, it's just one more race. Life goes on, and what can I say? It's, it's a tough day. Great performance nonetheless, mate. That's Tony Kanaan. Thank you, Calvin. Four cars remain on the lead lap. Bruno Jancara, the race leader, who started from pole as we work lap 122. Tony Kanaan led 72 of the 120 laps to this point. That interview did a good job of communicating what it feels like. I mean, Long Beach is one of the biggest races. This is one of the biggest races. It just feels like a big punch right in the gut. Such a long way to come to suffer that kind of disappointment. Going around, a relatively slow Christian Fittipaldi goes the race leader, Bruno Jancara. But Kanan's the, not the only driver out. Our defending champion is out as well. Let's get back down to Calvin Fish. Kenny, another tough day for you, man. It looks like you had a good car there at the beginning, but what ultimately put you out of the race? Yeah, the first few laps of car was good, then we had loop, big time loose, and then uh, we have no power. I don't know what it is, it's turbo broke or something, I don't know, uh, it just wouldn't pull. With the new wing package, Kenny, was it easier to go side by side? I saw you and Bruno and some of the other guys in the early laps. The car's more comfortable under this situation? Yeah, I think, I think it looks fine, you know, it's, uh, it's a shame with the target car here and uh, the Toyota and everybody, but uh, we'll go on to the next one. Okay, thanks a lot. There's a couple things that, that are, I mean, that are just throwing me here for a second. One, Michael breaking a rear wing and Kim Green catching it. I mean, that, that's huge. On the fly. That's huge. I don't, uh, I don't know what happened, but that's, wow. But a quick look at Alex Tagliani. We now have four cars on the lead lap. This is Townsend Bell, who hasn't slowed down much after that heavy contact with the wall right there. Of any problem at the right front. Shifting up one gear, down to one and two. Pull another gear right here. Oh, on board with a good shot. Dario Frank I just love to sit and watch this shot. This is as close as you'll ever get to feeling exactly what it's like to drive one of these cars. Minus four G's. Two to four <laughs> corners for 201 laps. Notice the helmet doesn't move hardly at all. It's set in place with that bolster that surrounds the driver's head. Here's a number we haven't called for a while. This is Michelle Jordan Jr. on a great run in position right now to beat his all-time career high in points. He's currently running in fifth place. Now, in the first two races of this season, he's amassed 22 points. His career high in six previous seasons is 30. A good run today. He will almost certainly come out with a new career high in points in just three races. Michelle, this is the first time he's had a good opportunity to work with, with a good, experienced guy like Jimmy Vassar and to have good equipment around him. He got trapped behind Amata and he let he he held it down. Someone said, hey, the leader's coming up on you, and he, he held it, and then he went around Amata on the outside. But he's running this race like a 500-miler, and it's unfolding like a 500-miler. And, uh, you know, he's just running his pace, and look, he's creeped up, and he's a lap down, but he's up in fifth place. Talking to these drivers before this race, a lot of concerns about durability with the car and with these engine packages. And so far, we're seeing quite a few issues already in this race. You see Fittipaldi, who is many laps down at this point, 14th place for Christian Fittipaldi after a strong start to the season in Motegi, Japan. A DNF for mechanical reasons in Long Beach two weeks ago. Look at him cranking on the front wing. They were just cranking, taking front wing out of there. That car's loose. He's fighting it. Says, hey, guys, we got to get this thing changed so I can be comfortable again. Here comes the race leader. 31. This is the magic lap. This is the end of the 38-lap window from the last stop. So expect all the guys that are on that strategy that stopped uh, way back. Uh, we'll back it up. Uh, 131. <laughs> My math is terrible. Uh, 118, is it? 119. All these guys coming in. 123. We talked about teamwork. Now you got to realize they got it. They got no matter when they stop, they got to take four tires. So even if they do a quick splash, you got to take four tires. Here they're loading on the field on his way. Something we, or I didn't consider when we were talking about the 
incredible endurance of these Bridgestone Potenza tires are that you don't have to put new tires on necessarily. You can keep, ooh, looks like a problem with the right front corner. Looks like they lost the air oh. oh. Wow, that looks like a Long Beach redo. And that was this man, Dario Franchitti, right across Tora Takagi's bows. That could have been very expensive. These pits aren't as tight as Long Beach. But one thing that actually didn't come out of Long Beach is there was no resolution on who should have avoided that. And now problems working on that right front corner at Townsend Bell's car. They got it. You got to remember, he went up and hit the wall, and what happens is he got into that spindle, and that spindle kind of mushroomed out. I've had this happen before. They got it changed. It just takes longer on the pit stop. So they sent Townsend Bell on his way with a fresh set. And he begins the long haul around to the acceleration lane on the far side of the racetrack. We'll take a quick break and return with more from Motegi, Japan. Welcome back to the Bridgestone Potenza 500, round three of the Kart FedEx Championship Series for 2002, on board with Dario Franchitti. Getting a lap behind the race leaders after a miscue in the pit lane caused him to pit just before the race restarted after a yellow flag. He's been trying desperately to get back on the lead lap. He just can't quite get that lead lap back. He needs some more yellows for something like that to happen. And the yellows actually don't work out like they used to because if you're ahead of the leader on the track and the yellow comes out, you get to make up your lap. But because you, but if you do that, you can't pit under that yellow to fuel, and so it almost washes the gain that used to happen. So these new, that's a un, probably foreseen consequence of these uh, these new fueling maneuvers. On board now with Townsend Bell. Be sure to join us for the Rolex Grand Am Sports Car Series action. United Auto 200 from Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, 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 oh. Bell. Oh. Oof. Holy smoot. Looks like he got in there and just see him still a lot steering. of wheel movement. Oh, man. I don't know if that thing just jumped out from underneath him. If you had a problem. First with thing it. that jumps to my mind is that oh. have anything to do with him hitting the wall. Exactly. exactly right. Cranking the rear suspension. There's the front wheel which came off after you saw it. It was still intact when he went into the wall. Followed by the the uh, the wheel nut. And we saw them having problems with the right front. I wonder if they had a stripped wheel nut. Well, the way it, the way it spun around, it's something definitely at the back of the car, if anything, at the back. So um, if he, you know, he hit first on the back when he, when he went up and whitewalled it. Did he weaken something there that failed? You can't tell from that, because he also hit the wall there. Wow, that was a big, That's a big shot. Good to see him. He was still steering the car when he was going backwards. So um, big shot. Okay. They're yeah. getting to him. Safety crew on the scene, trying to contain the engine fluids. Being here, I mean, I've been in that position and seen these guys pull up as fast as they do. Wow. I mean, that's, that makes you, I mean, this is a bad situation, but these guys are the best. Talk about what it feels like to look up and see Dr. Trammell or Dr. Olvey. I mean, you're, you're hurting and you're, you're scared, but to look up and see a familiar face, that must make a big difference. Sean Boyd here. Look. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, my. Oh, wow. Looks like it just jumped out from underneath him. He tried to correct. Lost his yeah, grip on the I'll steering I'll say he wheel. tried to correct. That, wow. I mean, that was his more right turn than you ever want to see on an oval. You, people are told you only try to chase it for a little while, and then, but I mean, and as he had all that steering, and you saw his hands come loose on the steering wheel. Yeah. Oh, if it had gripped, it almost, turned him right into the wall. It started to grip. It started mm -hmm. to turn right, and he was able to get all the steering the other way. Oh, that just puts your heart in your throat. That's a, these guys are working real hard to get him out of the car. Big shot. Rough welcome to the series for Townsend Bell. Now here's a look as he comes at you. There's the bump in turn three, the downshift. Getting down in. Starts to lose the back end. He corrects it. Look at it. Oh, man, that's the scary part. And then he gets it turned the other way. Wow. Uh, and he wasn't up into much no. of the gray. He was still no. on a grippy part of happened, the racing line. You know, you know, as the tires get worn a little bit, you know, and the track's getting a little bit Look greasy, you know, when you hit the downshift, that adds a little bit of rear brake to the to the car. In real time now, watch and listen. Ouch. Man, that was a big hit. He looked to be okay in the car right there in the immediate aftermath. 
here it is from the high camera across the track as he backs it in. Now, the, the way when he corrected, the way it wow. hooked tells me that the rear did not break, probably. Mm -hmm. If the rear had broken, it would have just spun and kept going. So it's probably just something lost the back of the car, chased it, and uh, was just digging yeah. there. Yeah. It looks like it just got loose from on the way in. We didn't see any problem with it. All the four wheels are on the car. At, at that point, when he lost it, it was still under... I mean, it, it looked to me like when he got in and just got away from him. We didn't expect it corrected for it. Boy, he's lucky he just didn't hook straight up into the fence. That's what the uh, crew under Dave Hollander and Lon Bromley at work. There's Pat Patrick, his car owner. So many years of racing experience. Talking it over with Jim McGee. Vastly experienced team manager. Well, we'll wait for word on Townsend Bell after a heavy crash. We'll be right back to Motegi, Japan. Welcome back to the Bridgestone Potenza 500. There's the race leader, Bruno Jancara, driving completely through the pits without stopping. We'll have to find out more about that a little bit later on. Right now, let's get to Calvin Fish with Jim McGee. Well, Jim McGee is watching the big screen. I know it's not a picture you want to see, Jim, but uh, Townsend had a problem out there with the car. Was it anything to do with the touch on the right front that he had earlier? No, no, no. He, uh, he just said it, he lost it. And, uh, uh, you know, we had a problem. He, he touched the wall with the right front previously. We had a tough time getting a nut off, but it went back on. It was, it was good and tight and everything like that. Uh, you say he said the car went loose, so he's okay? He's talking to you on the radio? Yeah, he talked to me. I said, how are you doing? He said, okay. He said, just a big hit. Okay, mate, thanks very much. Good news there is that Townsend is okay. Another aggressive run for the young rookie here today. Comes up a little short, however. All right, Calvin, if we could ask you, we'd like you to hear, and we'd like you to tell us more about what's going on with Bruno Shankara in that drive through as you watch Scott Dixon. A part of the fun of the CART FedEx Championship Series is the technology. And in this, our next Toyota Spotlight, last year's Rookie of the Year, explains the functions on his steering wheel. Uh, we're here at uh, PWR Championship Racing here in Indy, the, uh, the shop here, and, and uh, just taking a look basically at the wheel that we use uh, for the race and, and uh, the sort of more technical side of it. Um, you've got your gear light here, which you know tells you which gear you're in. Um, you've also got your shift lights here, which come up this way. have our fuel number which is, is how much is actually in the tank and a lap count. This one here is a MPG number which is you know fuel that you use per lap um, over a mileage and you have your lap time. Basically this one here is the uh, traction control for this year which is something that's been added. Um, you know it, it, it depends on the driver and, and you can set up in, in, in numerous ways and then with fuel which was one that was heavily used last year. Um, basically, the bigger the number you go, the more you lean the engine out, which, you know, this year we don't obviously have to use a whole lot. We also have the uh, fuel reset, which uh, just resets the tank fuel um, when we come in and, and make pit stops. Reset the fuel, reset the fuel. It's got the speed limiter one here, which is just for the pits. Um, you know, makes the car consistently run at the 50 miles an hour. This one here is the boost. Try and get it as close as possible to your 34 inches to, to produce the most power. Two more on the back. Um, on the left, we have the uh, radio. And this one here is actually the push to pass, which gives you most fuel. And uh, I don't know, it used to give you more boost and things like that. But that's generally about it. And it's what I have to look at for two hours every race. Uh, thanks to Scott Dixon. I remember years ago at Le Mans, we asked Kenny Atchison to explain the dashboard on his Mercedes sports car, and he ran down the line of gauges and switches and got to one and said, you know what? I have no idea what that does. <laughs> we'll be right back to Motegi. Welcome back to Motegi, Japan. Bob Marsha, Tommy Kendall, Scott Pruitt, Derek Daly, and Calvin Fish with you for round three of the CART FedEx Championship Series. Pit stop action Bruno going on. Bruno Calvin... is finally making the scheduled pit stop. He had the roll through area. Skids to a stop there a little bit on his marks. But this will be interesting to see if target Chip Ganassi can recover from this little mistake. It was just radio communication issues. We're going to try and regroup here. We have about just under 50 laps left, so there's a lot of racing left in this one. Sorry for stepping on you there, Calvin. Takagi doing a little chop there. Working him to the inside. Matt Takagi. Tora doing a chop. 
I, I know. I know. Hard to believe. I know. Wow, the cars look so slow, making that long trip to the exit of turn two. Takagi, Junquera, Adrian Fernandez. Tommy talked earlier about the problems they've been having with weight jackers broken. Just the beginning of a litany of problems for a man who won the first two iterations of this race in 1998 and 99. Back to Calvin. Mike, now that things have shaken out a little bit, tell us about what happened during that caution period when Bruno rolled through the pits here. <laughs> he, he, missed, he missed the pit entrance, uh, and the way that the cart works is not everybody comes in the same time. Uh, people on the lead lap come in on what they call the plus lap, so he missed that. Bruno came in, so what you have to do is you got to drive right through, then you got to pack up, and then you come in, and once that happens, then you have to start at the back. So we did everything the way we had to do it according to the rule book, and as you can see, we're back where we need to be, so it's going to come down to the end here. He certainly sliced through that field like a knife through butter. He seems to be the most, certainly the quickest car in the field right now. He's, he's doing a great job. Toyota Motors, obviously a great motor today, but the thing is there's a lot of guys who dropped out of the race. Obviously, it'd be difficult if all those front runners are still with us. Uh, we were kind of hoping that Kenny and the other target car was going to be up there with us, but it didn't happen today. All right, Mike. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks. This is Mike Hall from Target Chip Ganassi Racing. There's Alex Tagliani, shown as first on the racetrack, now behind the pace car. One would expect that he will be in top off on fuel before we go green. Now remember, earlier Dario Franchini got caught out. We're hearing from the Team Cool Green squad that they weren't given a clear signal of when there was one lap to go to the green. So I'm wondering if the players team might be a little bit careful about when they bring this guy in. This is a little curious because he's he's sticking to the exact 3876. He, he hasn't deviated it from that at all. And but he's only got a little depending on how long this yellow lasts. He doesn't have a lot of laps before he has to come in. So this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You saw Bruno Giancara count the cars up to the leader 11 cars before you get to that man Alex Tagliani. See I'd come in here and do, go ahead and take four fill the car up that puts you when you when you move forward that that gives you this that that big margin because another yellow might just come out. So you still need one more to get to the end, but what he has is he, he has a free pass here. I believe because of that penalty, Bruno has to start behind him. So exactly. even if he comes in now and comes back, he ordinarily would be right behind Bruno. But I think if he came in and came back out, I think Bruno would have to go back behind him again. There's only two cars on the lead lap, but that would be a freebie. He has a little bit of track position here, and if it stays green till the end, there's no real penalty. But if there's a yellow between when he comes in and Bruno makes his last stop, he's cooked. Still looking for his first win. Alex Tagliani about to roll the dice. Stay with us. Welcome back to Motegi, Japan. The bridge to Potenza 500 goes back under green after a long yellow to pick up the crushed race car of Townsend Bell, who appears to be all right. There's Alex Tagliani. We talked about him pitting now that the window is open. Oh, we'll get to Tagliani in a moment. Sinji Nakano has lost the left rear wheel on his race car. Left rear wheels can come completely off. It looks like he had some sort of indication he was way down to the bottom of the track, Tommy. Yeah, he had pulled down, but he did not make a stop on that last yellow, so it's not like they just left it loose. But well, again, we've seen a bunch of examples of guys dodging trouble, knowing about it before it happened in the corner. Now that's, you know, we've had this problem before. If you get a new set of wheels and you don't get them bent in, they can actually work themselves loose on that nut. Now let's get back to Tagliani. This brings out another yellow flag and another opportunity for Tagliani to pit so the situation may have played into his hands he did not pit under that previous yellow so he's obviously intending to run green for a while his last stop was on lap 131 so he has to be in on 169 that's only uh, 10 or 12 laps from now so uh, I would expect Tagliani to be in so he's got another chance to get in this should be a slam dunk bring him in that brings you know if you come in now that pushes it all the way to about 197 198 somewhere in there three or four laps from the end of the race so it looks like Sinji Nakano will make it back to his pit mount another wheel if they can and send the Japanese driver on his way back under yellow at the Bridgestone Potenza 500 stay with us back at Motegi still under yellow enjoy our final Toyota spotlight the sounds of speed
you knew that was coming. Townsend Bell's crash. Bell, by the way, is in the infield medical center where he has been diagnosed as having bruised knees, but no broken bones or other complications. He'll be released and sent home to the United States on schedule, and that's great news. Rune Jankara runs in second place. Bob Varsha along with Tommy Kendall and Scott Pruitt. Go ahead, Scott. I'm surprised he didn't bring Alex Taglian. Taglian. Still has not pitted. 162. If they had gotten to 163, the window would have opened for everybody, and everybody would have been pits. But Alex Tagliani has to be in by lap 169, and so if there, if it goes green to the end, it nets out as no difference, and he has a little bit better track position. But the risk between 169 and when Bruno has to come in, if you get a yellow, he's sunk. And there's no advantage gained by doing this, other than that little bit of track position. He's taking that extra risk. Meanwhile, there is Junkera, who is absolutely shot from a cannon, coming from the back of the group where he was placed after that pit miscue earlier. He's just carving his way right back up to the field. Not only did Bruno pit on 144, he extended his window. He pitted at the end of that caution, which uh, on 152, which means he is not due in until 190. So between 169 and 190, he's at risk. I, would have brought, I mean, you think about both these guys on the lead lap by themselves. Both of these teams should have brought these guys in just for this. Is, then, if you went to the end, you might make it. I mean, you have to make a pit stop one or two, or two or three laps from the end. But at least if another yellow came out, you'd be in that window. Because a green flag stop is just so detrimental. Every, all your strategy has to be dictated towards extending your window out. And so, uh, there's going to be an opportunity coming up oh. here with Dario. Dario can go even further. Dario, I believe, can go to 197. And so he will have a little bit of an opportunity if between 190 when Bruno pits and 197 when he pits, if there's a yellow in those things, he'll make up that lap and then some, and it'll be a shootout for the very end of the race. It's like Takagi's having a good run, putting some heat on. Now, he isn't on the same lap, but he's certainly putting some heat on Takagi. And there he goes, right up the inside. I wonder if Tag must be having some sort of problem with his car. It's just wondering if he does not work in the way he'd want it to right now. Much problems, maybe some reason you don't want to stop for fear of not being able to get back out. Well, he has to stop again, no well, matter true. what. Yeah. So it's yes. uh, you better you better do it in yellow than in green. And look at Bruno Shakira rocket past Tagliani for the lead. Takagi made up a lap, but that man, Bruno Shakira, is now in the race lead, having caught that man, Alex Tagliani, in very very few laps. The only two cars on the lead lap, as Tommy mentioned. Now Tagliani now has to pit. I believe at 169, so he's going to be in very shortly. Two more laps, and he will be in a working 168 right now. All right, I mean, he's, he's not off the pace completely. He's not running as quick as Bruno or, or he was earlier, but he's not, I mean, he's not dropping like a stone to the back. See the new running order across the top of your screen. Jacara Tagliani, then a lap down is Frank Keaty. Still suffering from that earlier pit miscue. Michelle Jordan Jr. having a quiet race. Patrick Carpentier has come forward. Mario Serbia, Mario Dominguez. So Tag should be in this lap. To finish this lap and be should be on his way in if they don't have any communication problems. Yep, here he comes. <laughs> like Mexico. Like Mexico. That was Monterey, Mexico, the season opener where his teammate, Patrick Carpentier, said he couldn't hear the instructions to pit went one lap beyond the mandatory pit window, and his race basically was toast. So this is a good illustration of, of how, how critical that is, or how much time he loses. All those guys are running 200 miles an hour while he stopped, and so it'll be 70-some seconds. They have another stop to make, so if it stays green, it nets out as nothing. But the risk now is, look, so those guys are going to be one lap, almost three laps they'll put on him while he stopped. That makes the and yellow flag so important. Why didn't you use a yellow when you had one? I guess they're 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 obviously gambling that it's mm -hmm. going to go green the rest of the way. Exactly. So, but the risk, the reward. Again, if you gained a bunch by doing that, I can see get rolling the dice, but you gain nothing. You gain nothing at all, and it doesn't make any sense. You should go ahead and let it take and open up your window as much as possible, taking advantage of those yellows. Tagliani comes back on track in eighth place. Tortakagi. Tortakagi's having a great run right now. He's up there for now. He's not on the same lap, but he's certainly pacing Bruno. Excuse me. Could not be eight. Shankara looking for that big $5,000 donation to St. Jude's Hospital with a victory. 
basically except for missing the pit entrance and having to do the drive through and drop back it's been a pretty clean and green day for him this looks slow is he just getting going Looks like he's fighting something with the car. Yeah, I mean, he just looks like he's off the pace. Doesn't look right for Tagliani. Now we got to mention with Tortakagi, he did get a stop and go penalty because he ran over. And now this is a while ago. He did run over okay. another hose. I think it was Max's one of Max's uh, hoses. He had to come in and get a stop and go. On board with Dario Franchitti, checking the timing monitors. Yes, in fact, Alex Tagliani did go two laps down in eighth. That's what a green flag stop will cost you at Motegi. We'll be back. Welcome back to Twin Ring Motegi in Japan at the Bridgestone Potenza 500. I'm Bob Varsha with Scott Pruitt, Tommy Kendall, Calvin Fish, and Derek Daly. And you are riding with Dario Franchitti. Torres had a good solid race. Unfortunately, that miscommunication, getting a lap down early, but he's won a strong race all day long. That's the only difference between him and the leaders, virtually, is that when they tried to extend their window, what we've been telling everyone what Tagliani should be doing, they did on the lap it went green and didn't get quite back caught up before they went green, ended up going a lap down and hasn't been able to get back to that. His only chance, again, is between 190 and 197. If they can get a yellow there, he'll make that time up. And other than that, he's probably trapped a lap down. And it's worth the gamble. I mean, it's absolutely worth the gamble because it takes so long to get in and out of the pits. Chips are shots. His belt occasionally flaps up into the picture. I'm surprised he wouldn't fasten that down. And it's amazing you do. You stick it down inside, and then after about, <laughs> after about uh, I don't know, 100 laps or so, it just kind of works its way loose. And it'll start flapping around a little bit. There's Mr. Osaka, and I mean, this I don't know if this is true or this is urban legend, but after the first year at Motegi when Ford won, rumor has it that some senior engineer slapped a junior engineer in a bar to say this is dishonorable. So it just it gives you a sense of how important this is between Toyota and Honda. I was there. I saw it. You were in the bar after the race at Motegi at that uh, hotel right behind the track, and it did happen. Well, there you go. It's, it's brutal. This is Sinji Nakano. A moment ago, you saw Tora Takagi. Down two gears. Then they turn three. Working through three. I know you can't see that, but... Excellent teammates. He's back going again. These guys have had just a brutal weekend down here. Fernandez, using Ford power, won the first two Bridgestone Potenza 500s in 1998 and 99. Notice the difference. This is, you know, on board with Dario again. Also, the visor cam, because this is mounted to the car, you don't get the tip of the head at all or any of the movement of the head. Big difference, even though they're coming from within about a foot of each other. Yeah, Dario likes to lean his head a little bit. He's actually packed it into that one spot. He can't straighten up if he wants to to counteract the G-load. They use those bolsters to the driver's right. You get a good feel how big that bump is getting in turn three, too. I mean, it's a, it's a big shot, especially when you're braking, downshifting right there in the same area. Carpentier's having a solid run. Jordan, I mean, he's on his way to another top five. And uh, Serbia has had a quiet day, but just closing. Serbia qualified more 10 or 11 miles an hour off the pole. He has made eight pit stops to this point, has Oriol Serbia. They must have been awfully quick ones. He's got one more to come, and here he is, running up toward the top five and six. We are talking about that. This is just taking advantage of opening up your opportunity under yellow. All those all those pit stops, not all of them, but most of them have come under, the, under yellow just trying to open up that opportunity. Hard to believe Dario Franchitti is still looking for his first Park FedEx Championship Series oval track victory. All his wins have come on road courses and street circuits. Tell you what, with the way he's run this race, without that, without that mistake, he'd be uh, right up there battling for the win and looking pretty confident. I look for him to be a, a good guy in the Indy 500. Dario Franchitti. Michelle Jourdain having a good solid run on his way down. 50 miles an hour. Now you got to remember, no matter how much fuel, they have to take on four tires. So when we get down to the end at 197, 196 left, these guys are going to come in. It's not just, it's for just a splash of fuel, but they have to take four tires. 
See, the fuel's already pulled away. Very quick splash of fuel. Fish pointed out there were a negative camber at the left front, positive camber at the right front to stand that tire up under the G-loadings in the turns. So far, Tagliani dodging that bullet. A lot of laps going by, and so if, if he can go until Bruno pits, it will be like it never happened, and then he'll be back within whatever it is. However, whoever's run quicker will be ahead at that point. And Bruno's just having a terrific run, keeping his nose clean all day long. Not a couple close calls, but... Really, it's paying off for him all day long. Shapira going by Mario Dominguez, I believe. And actually, it's uh, the Christian Christian Fittipaldi. Fittipaldi. Wow, amazing to see Fittipaldi running around at the back like that. He is, that makes him unofficially 13 laps down to the race leader. The kind of thing we expect from Fittipaldi. We'll take a break and be back with more from Motegi. Stay with us. Welcome back, getting into the closing laps of the Bridgestone Potenza 500, round three of the CART FedEx Championship Series for 2002. Glad to have you with us. A dozen or so laps remaining. Alex Tagliani has absolutely confounded our announce booth, I must say, by not taking a pit stop under an extended yellow flag just before the opening of the final 38 lap window that would have allowed him to get close to the end of this race without sacrificing the kind of racetrack you do making a green flag stop here at Motegi. If they get to 190, which is only three laps from now, then Bruno has to come in, and it, it, all of our uh, puffin' and puffin' histrionics is all for naught. <laughs> so uh, that's what he's hoping. It looks like he's running quick again. So he, for a few laps there, he looks like he dropped some, some speed. We'll see once Bruno stops and it evens out how much behind he is, and we'll, we'll know if, if he really was uh, running quick or if he had fallen off for a few laps. We'll try this at home, kids. We are trained professionals. <laughs> really? But even if that happens, it, I think you'll see guys reassessing their strategy because the, the risk-reward of what they've done is just staggering. And so it, it might work out, but I don't think it's probably your best. All, you know, ten, you run 10 races, you're going to have yellows in that 20-some lap period oftentimes. Let's look at Adrian Fernandez, currently sixth, but as nice a guy as he is, that is a very hard-earned sixth. The way that car has been running all weekend, I think he'll admit that attrition has had a lot to do with him getting up there. Attrition and, man, when that car's not working, this is the longest race imaginable. This thing will feel like a 1,000 miles. Because you're working so hard. Here's Bruno Junquera. Our race leader is in the pits for the final time. Let's get down to Calvin Fish, who awaits him in the target pits. Well, Bruno Junquera makes that long trek down pit lane, hopefully for the very last time here today. We've got 10 laps to go in this one. He's going to be getting fresh tires. Tire conservation has been a factor here this weekend because they only had eight sets of tires to work with. There should be no other changes on the car, just fresh tires, quick fill there, and he's underway. Behind Tora Takagi. We've seen this before. He made a good point a moment ago, TK, and that is that with the new cart rules this year, that is the story of the season. All of this experience up and down the pit lane, but with the new rules thrown at them, everybody is learning at every race. And that's right. It gets back to that strategy. Mario Franchitti takes the race lead for the first time today. And now by the time that Bruno, look at this, by the time Bruno gets up to speed, you will have Tagliani on the same lap, you will have Dario leading, you will have Fernandez on the same lap, you'll have Carponti on the same lap. Now between, if you get a yellow now, all those guys are in the race. If you don't, they all have to stop on lap 196 or 197. Dario on 197. So if a yellow comes in now, you've got six guys on the lead lap for exactly. a shootout. Exactly. And these guys are hoping for a yellow right now. Kara has played his card. Christian Fittipaldi once again, now 14 laps down. Oh, my goodness. Looks like the with the red accents on that predominantly blue and white player's paint job. Michelle Jourdain just behind him. In position. At this point, he will almost certainly will Jourdain break his career record for points in a season in just three races here in 2002. He's doing a solid job. 
Yeah, well, this is, you know, he's been struggling for the last, I mean, you got to realize this guy was only 19 when he did his first race. He's only 25 now. Mm -hmm. He's still got, you know, now this is a very pivotal year. A good team with Ray Hall, a good opportunity, a great teammate to learn from. Whoa, shaving some hairs there. Hernandez and Damata. So he needs to step up this year and show what he's got, and he's doing a great job. Board with Frank Keaty. With four to go, he will have to stop in the pits and take, they'll just wait on tires. You know, they'll, they'll plug in the fuel, do a time stop, and they just wait on tires, drop the car as soon as he, uh, the tires are done, and uh, see where it takes out. He'll probably be on a lap by himself, I think, once everybody has done their stop, if you don't go yellow. Short enough to lose just one lap for the race leader. So he'll, yeah, he'll still lose the better part of two, but he's almost a full lap ahead right, right now. Right, exactly. Right. He'll net one lap. On his way by Tag's teammate, Patrick Carpentier. Bottling up Bruno Jacquero right now. Bruno's having a real heads-up race here today. You know, in the closing stages, you can also see how good Takagi's running. They came out together, Bruno and Takagi. Now, he's a good second and a half up on him. Only one career victory for Bruno Jacquero's. Frankiti heads for the pit lane. The last time a driver won from pole on an oval track Frank was Frankiti and Patrick both on their way in. Mm -hmm. Kenny Brack did it at Milwaukee last year. So you saw Bruno unlap himself there, and now he'll go mm -hmm. around while this is going on. Frankiti heads for the pit lane, and Derek Daly is standing by in the team green pits to call the stop. Now Derek? it begins to unfold for Frankiti. He did not get the yellow he needed to stay on the same lap as Bruno Junquera. So now, it's as fast as you can go, and see what happens. Patrick Carpentier ahead of Frank Keaty as he makes his way back out. Junquera has gone by to put them one lap down. There's Junquera. On the back stretch, and for turn three. He and Tagliani will be on a lap by themselves. But I believe that race with Dario and Carpentier coming out of the pit lane, I believe that is for position right here. This is for position. Watch when they let go of the button. Well, I guess the, the button holds until not quite yet. Now. The button must hold until you push it again. Yeah, it's, it's a latch. You push it once and it latches and you push it again, comes undone. Like cruise control. Exactly. It is, and you hate it. Now, this is a great view. This is a battle for position after 300 miles of racing. Cold tires. Good point. And no fuel conservation. And the outside. Ooh. Oh, Frank Eady paid for it there. Just got up a little too high. You saw. I mean, that's part of it. You got to get out there and really charge on these cold tires, but you get in a little deep and you got to let the car come up. When you get come, uh, come up like that, you get up out of the group and slide up. White flag has waved over Bruno Junquera, trying to become the first man to win on an oval track from pole in nearly a year in the Kart FedEx Championship Series. Should he take the checkers, which he almost certainly will with one corner to go, it will be his second career win coming on the heels of his victory at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin last year. Checkered flags wave. Bruno Jacquera with Target Chip Ganassi Racing wins the Bridgestone Potenza 500. And this is huge for Bruno, having two struggles this year, showing very, very fast speeds. This could be the turnaround for Bruno for the rest of the season. And important to everyone in those grandstands, a Toyota wins the Honda race two weeks after a Honda won Toyota's race. Well, Tagliani was second. I, I'm wondering how that battle resolved itself. But we'll be back. If a Kirk back at Twin Ring Motegi, Bruno Giancara has come through to win unofficially. Alex Tagliani finishes second. Dario Franchitti third. Here's Derek Daly. Bruno Giancara gets to celebrate. <laughs> he points down to the Toyota sign. Look at this here, boys. What a great celebration scene for Bruno Junquera. Bruno, get the helmet off there. Wow. 
Brian, help him with the helmet off here. What a mob scene here for Bruno Junquera. Bruno, yesterday you said in qualifying it was one of those magic laps, and today you turned it into a victory. What a day. Today was a magic race. What a tough race. What an incredible pace. Man, I think I left whole, whole field. I don't know. The car was awesome. Toyota gave me a great, great engine for this reliable went to the finish. I'm really happy with my target crews. Everybody in the team worked really hard for the press season. Thank you, everybody. Did you know that your teammate Kenny Brack went out with a mechanical problem? Was there any concern to you? No, I don't know. Just try on the early race to be behind Trace and Tony and knew that they were pushing too hard. And I was just waiting for them. Mid of the race, I saw they could pass Tony. Then after they fall off, and that's a good thing. I think Toyota gave me a reliable engine, and I'm really happy to win here in Japan for them. Bruno, do you know that yesterday when we spoke, you were out of breath, and you're out of breath again today? Uh, that's, that's unbelievable. I'm one of the happiest moments of my life. Thank you, Bruno. Congratulations. Calvin? Well, the players' team go crazy, and it's Alex Tagliani who takes a second-place finish here at Motegi. Great run today, Alex. Yeah, I'm very happy for uh, the players' team. We had uh, a lot of problems in the first two days, but uh, I think this team is strong this year, and uh, my, guys, my guys does a fantastic job in the pit stop. We work all weekend long, and uh, I think the team deserved it. Ford engine was very good power. Uh, nothing behind, but, uh, you know, it's, those are long races, and I'm really uh, glad that everything lasts until the end. When Bruno had his issues and he had to come back through pit lane again and make a stop and you took the lead, did you think you had anything for him or was that car of his, the number four machine, just too fast today? Well, definitely the, his car was quick, uh, honestly. But um, sometimes there's uh, those uh, issues on the track where you can be stuck behind a couple of guys. I lost, you know, four tenths every lap behind traffic. That's uh, an issue, but, uh, you know, I think he deserved the win. He was really quick all weekend long, so... You know, we're pleased with the podium and uh, we'll continue to score points for the championship. Great job, Tags. Thank you. Dario, Dario, I know, hugs all around. It was a good day, really, and now you're the points leader. Yeah, it was a fairly average day, actually. <laughs> we came here with one objective, and that was to win the race, and we, uh, we made a mistake in the strategy, put us a lap or two down, and we were fighting from then on. You know, the car wasn't bad, and the guys... I mean, the guys at Team Co Green did an awesome job. They had, I don't know how many stops we did, but there was a, there was a, a fair few. Um, I, I came on the radio at one point because we didn't get a full load of fuel, and I gave the guys a hard time, but it wasn't their fault. It was a, it was a fuel probe problem. So, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry for the guys at Honda because they worked so hard for this one, and I think they had the engine to do it. We just messed up the strategy. When it goes wrong that early in the race, Dario, is it a frustration for you, or do you have to just refocus yourself not to get upset? I was I was pretty wound up, but I was just attacking every lap. Every, I was trying to make up any advantage I could because who knows what happens at the end, you know. So you just got to make up ground wherever you can, and that's what I was trying to do. But now tell me, the points lead is a little consolation. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. Well, uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll keep that through the month of May, and then we'll uh, come back to Milwaukee and try and win that one. Thank you, Dario. Well done. Thank you. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Here's a look at the unofficial final results. Bruno Shankara picks up the 45th career win for Target Chip Ganassi Racing, second only to Newman Haas and 62 victories among active kart teams. Alex okay, Tagli, what, uh, go ahead, Okay, Scott. what would you do if you were Dario going into Milwaukee? Would you go with the Lola or would you go with the Reynard? He has a lot of time to think about it. <laughs> He's got the month of May. Here's a look at the points. As Derek mentioned, Dario Franchitti moves into the points lead by two over Michelle Jourdain Jr. Alex Tagliani in fourth place. He matched his best Ladies career finish with a runner-up finish today. Rookie Mario Dominguez picks up his first championship Welcome points. And on uh, speed, we've gotten the habit of promising you the post-race festivities. Right after this, I'm being told we might have the falling on the sword ceremony. <laughs> the official Harry <laughs> Carey. MTV has celebrity death match. We have the falling on the sword. Oh, hopefully in claymation.
This is awesome. What a great win for Bruno. This could turn things around. I don't know about you guys, but with this long entry and exit, it was a bit confusing at times. Oh, uh, yeah. We made uh, even us supposed experts uh, trip over ourselves a little bit. Here's the information on our next event, the weekend of June 2nd, the Miller Lite 250 from the Milwaukee Mile. Practice, cart Friday, the Sunday. A great day for Michelle Jourdain, another top five, and a great day for Oriel Servia. Final thoughts, Tommy? Well, how about Cristiano D'Amato? All the talk at the end of last year, offseason now, and uh, Cristiano, a total non-factor. They've got a month to stew on that. Good race, good fun. We hope you enjoyed it. For Scott Pruitt, Tommy Kendall, Calvin Fish, and Derek Daly, I'm Bob Varsha. Sayonara for now.